Council meeting of May 19th. Roll call, please. Alderman Kurkowski. Here. Lorick? Here. Dukniak? Here. Tillman? Here. Gale? Here. Guzikowski? Here. Everybody, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Greg, you want to start us off? Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Uh, before we go on to the minutes, uh, we got a notice, and Catherine's going to read us in uh, regarding the virtual. Certainly. The City of Oak Creek is authorized to hold this public meeting remotely during the COVID-19 public health emergency. This meeting being conducted via a Zoom media video pardon me, <clears throat> conference with telephone conferencing capability was duly noticed per the City of Oak Creek Municipal Code and statutory notice requirements more than 24 hours in advance of the meeting. Members of the public have been advised of the op options for participation via direct mailing to property owners. This meeting may also be viewed at the city's YouTube page, the link for which was contained in all aforementioned notice methods. The meeting recording will also be accessible on the city's YouTube page within 48 hours. When unmuted, all participants must state their name and address for the record then proceed with comments or questions. Questions and comments may also be entered into the Q&A function within the Zoom webinar control panel. Staff and or a moderator will monitor this function during the meeting and provide the information requested. There is one or more public hearings scheduled as part of this meeting. After the mayor announces the public hearing, staff will read the public hearing notice into the record, state that the hearing is open and subject to the meeting procedure above and provide a brief overview of the proposal. The chair will then proceed with the hearing by making calls for public comment. Following the third call for public comment, the chair will close the public hearing and proceed to consideration of the remaining agenda items. Thank you, Catherine. You're welcome. Um, item three, approval of minutes of 5-5. If everybody please take a look. <clears throat> when you're satisfied, there's no errors, omissions, corrections. Uh, we'll entertain a motion. Krakowski, make a motion to approve the minutes of May 5th, 2020. Krakowski, I'll second. Roll call. Alderman Lorick? Aye. Duke Nia? Aye. Toman? Aye. Gail? Aye. Krakowski? Aye. Krakowski? Aye. And item four is our first public hearing of the night, and it's from the Milwaukee County Parks uh, to consider a rezone of the property at 2121 West Trexel Avenue. Um, Catherine, would you read that in, please? Certainly. Public hearing number one is to consider a request by Guy Smith, Milwaukee County Parks, to rezone the property at 2121 West Drexel Avenue from RS2, single family residential, to P1 Park District. No change to floodway or FF flood fringe districts. Applicant is Guy Smith, Milwaukee County Parks. Property owner is Milwaukee County Parks. There follows the legal description. Date of notice is April 15th. 2020. Thank you, Catherine. Doug. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Doug Seymour. I'm the Director of Community Development for the Steve Creek. And this is a public hearing and a request to rezone the property at 2121 West Drexel Avenue. Milwaukee County Parks recently acquired the prop this property uh, actually from the Milwaukee County Economic Development Department. So it was an inter interagency transfer uh, and is looking to rezone it to P1 Park District as an addition to Falk Park. Uh, the, there would be no change to the floodway flood or flood fringe districts uh, as they would also be included in the rezone. It's really, this property was planned to be part of Falk Park. Uh, it uh, became ownership from the county, I believe, through a, a tax foreclosure. Uh, and uh, really, the future land use map does show this for, for future park purposes as part of an addition to Falk Park. Uh, the Planning Commission has, held a, has reviewed this request and they've recommended to the council that the rezoning be approved after a public hearing. This being a public hearing and subject to the notations read earlier, uh, the mayor will call for three times for public comment. Uh, when when you are select, when you ask, please uh, give your name and address and proceed to address your question and or comment to the Common Council. This public hearing is now open. Thank you, Doug. Uh, this will be the first call. Um, Kevin, do we have anybody wishing to speak on the first call? Uh, we only have uh, Milwaukee County, Sarah Thompson. Um, if Sarah would like to speak, uh, name and address. 
or is she just here for questions if, if they arise? I am here for questions. Um, Milwaukee County Parks is at 9480 Watertown Plank Road in Wauwatosa, 53226. I agree with the report that was provided and I'm available if any questions arise. Thank you, Sarah. <clears throat> this will be the second call. Yeah, no one, Kevin? Third and final call. We will now close the public hearing and go to item five, which is consideration of the ordinance approving that rezone of the property at 2121 West Drexel Avenue. Uh, questions from the alders? Chris? Uh, Mr. Mayor, at the um, Plan Commission meeting, the parks uh, uh, where the, Sarah was on the, on the call as well, we had a number of callers that called in and uh, it was a good, good call. And I think all of their answers were answered satisfactory so it seemed like everybody was in agreement and understood what's going on here okay uh any other questions seeing none motion on five please lorical move that the council adopt ordinance number 2971 approving a rezone of the property at 2121 west drexel avenue from rs2 single family residential to p1 park district Freezy Kowski, second. Roll call. Yeah. Aye. Tillman? Aye. Gail? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. Lorick? Aye. Item six is also uh, <clears throat> a rezone uh, submitted by the county parks. Uh, the properties in, in question are 747-5R <clears throat> South Chapel, and they're going from RS4, single family. Uh, to P1 Park District. Catherine, would you read that in, please? Certainly. Public hearing number two is to consider a request by Guy Smith, Milwaukee County Parks, to rezone the property at 7475R South Chapel Drive from RS4 Single Family Residential to P1 Park District. Applicant is Guy Smith, Milwaukee County Parks. Property owner is Milwaukee County Parks. There follows the legal description. Date of notice is April 15th, 2020. Thank you. This, this second public hearing also uh, with respect to properties owned by Milwaukee County is for the property at 7475 South Chapel Drive and you can see on the screen that is the property in the red hash marks uh, uh, at the end of, of Lynn Haven Drive there. Uh, Milwaukee County again had acquired this property from the their economic development division and they're requesting that it be rezoned to P1 Park District consistent with the, the remainder of the park property that is in the area. The Planning Commission has reviewed the proposal and they have recommended that the property be rezoned after public hearing. Uh, as Alderman Guzikowski noted at the Planning Commission, there were uh, several residents who had a few questions about the ultimate plans for the property. And at this point in time, it was, it was shared that there are no plans to develop the property. It's just a means of aligning the, the, the anticipated use of this property with the mission and goals of the Parks Department and having the entirety of the property zone P1. So with that in mind, if anyone has any questions or comments and is registered to participate in the hearing this evening, once your name is called, please give your name and address and proceed to address your question or comment to the Common Council. This public hearing is now open. Thank you, Doug. As Doug said, this will be the first call. Uh, Kevin, anybody? Just parks again, maybe? Just the parks for this one as well. Okay. Um, second call, anybody wishing to speak? Third and final call. We'll now close the public hearing and move on to seven, which is consideration of an ordinance to rezone that property from RS4 single family to P1 park. Uh, questions, comments? Steve? Uh, this is Alderman Krakowski, first district. Um, uh, I read the comments in the, from the notes from the plan commission. And um, since the meeting, even before the meeting, I have had no calls from any of the residents in that area, either pro or opposed to this uh, rezoning. And I'm sure Chris can uh, elaborate the, the plan commission meeting. Um, actually, we had, I would say, if I remember right, we had four to six residents that were on there mm -hmm. and um, all uh, voted in or were in favor of what was going on here. They're just looking for clarity on it mostly. Yeah. 
Yeah. Thank you. I think that sums it up. Um, it's going to stay in a natural state. Uh, there were some questions about parking, uh, particularly in Lynn Haven Drive, but they can actually access there anyway. So um, it was pretty standard. It's actually a, a plus for the neighborhood, I think. So if no other questions, motion on seven. Krakowski make a motion that the council adopt ordinance number 2972 approving a rezone of the property at 7475R South Chapel Drive from RS4 single family residential to P1 Park District. Lorkel second. Roll call. Alderman Toman. Aye. Gail. Aye. Kusikowski. Aye. Krakowski. Aye. Lorik. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Item eight is consideration of a rezone for the property at 3566 East Fitzsimmons Road from RS3 single family to A1 limited agricultural. Catherine, would you read that one in? Certainly, public hearing number three is to consider a request by Lyle and Elaine Bolander to rezone the property at 3566 East Fitzsimmons Road, lot one of a cer certified survey map to be reported from RS3 single family residential to A1 limited agricultural. Applicant is Lyle and Elaine Bolander. Property owner, Lyle and Elaine Bolander. There follows the legal description. Date of notice is April 15th, 2020. Thank you, Doug. Thanks again, Catherine. Uh, this request is related to a certified survey map that is also being reviewed by the Common Council of this meeting uh, subsequent to the action on the rezoning and the public hearing. Uh, the proposal at this point in time is to reconfigure the property boundaries for the property at 3510 and 3566 East Fitzsimmons Road to maintain an agricultural zoning on the residential parcel with the, with the home, add some acreage to that and leave the larger parcel, uh, which would be about 52 acres, again, it's remaining agricultural. But in order to get the agricultural zoning on the smaller parcel, which was in its present state, about one acre, they need to have a five acre minimum. That CSM accomplishes that five acre minimum and allows for that property to be, be rezoned agricultural. Uh, the plan commission at the meeting of April 4th did review this proposed rezoning and certified survey map for that matter, and has recommended that the rezoning be approved subject to the, the public hearing that you're holding this evening. So if anyone who has any questions or comments is registered for for the public hearing, uh, please give your name, address, and proceed to address your questions or comments to the Common Council. This public hearing is now open. Thank you, Doug. Kevin, anybody wishing to speak? We have uh, Lyle Olander. Um, please allow Lyle to speak. <clears throat> All right, Lyle, you are unmuted. Sure. I'm here. Hello, Lyle. Yes. Hi, uh, name and address, please, for the record to begin with. Lyle Bollander, 3566, East Fitzsimmons Road. Thank you. Um, would you like to just make a general statement or be public comment? No, I don't. We're just here for questions. Okay, thank you. Um, that is the first call. Uh, we will make this the second call. No one for the second call. Third and final call. Seeing none, we will close the public hearing and go on consideration of the ordinance to rezone that property. Uh, questions for the Bolanders? Mr. Mayor, we did have somebody call oh. and Oh, I am sorry if I moved too quickly. Um, please put them on. All right. Uh, phone number 3216, you're unmuted and able to talk. I'm just checking to see if I can break the unmute. I was unmuted. I'm sorry. I'm not commenting, but I would agree with Lyle in rezoning of this project. Goodbye. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay. Um, Again, um, kind of caught a break there because the public hearing was closed. <laughs> so in any case, <laughs> I moved a little quick. I apologize. I'll slow that down. Um, questions for the Bolanders, anybody? No. Uh, seeing none, motion, please. 
Someone will make a motion to adopt ordinance number 2973, approving a rezone of the property at 3566 East Fitzsimmons Road from RS3 single family residential to A1 limited agriculture. Roll call. <clears throat> Alderman Gale? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. Lorick? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Tillman? Aye. And item 10 is consideration of a resolution approving a certified survey map uh, by Lyle and Elaine Bolander uh, at Al for the properties at 3510 3566 East Fitzsimmons Road. Yes, thank you. So at the public hearing that proceeded, we talked about the, the rezoning, which in effect set up the this land division for the existing home uh, and the accompanying or the proposed five acres uh, to retain or to have the agricultural zoning with the remainder of the parcel, about 52 acres, as an outlaw which will be available for future development. There is no development imminent, but this does set the stage for division of those parcels, again, to allow for the, the homestead to remain as a separate parcel and allow for uh, a future development on outlaw one. And again, at the point that outlaw one would be developed, there'd be a whole range of things that would need to happen in terms of wetland delineations and what have you. This is not happening right now. This is just setting the stage for that in the future. Great, thank you for the explanation, Doug. Uh, questions for Doug? Seeing none, motion please. Coleman will make a motion to adopt resolution number 12157, approving a certified survey map submitted by Lyle and Elaine Bullender et al. for the purposes at, for the properties at 3510 and 3566 East Fitzsimmons Road. Oracle second. Roll call. Alderman Guzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. Lorick? Aye. Duke Nian? Aye. Toman? Aye. Gail? Aye. In item 11 is our fourth public hearing. Um, it is consideration of a rezone of a property at 10308 South Chicago Road from A1 Limited Agriculture to RS1 Single Family. Uh, Catherine, if you would. Certainly, <clears throat> public hearing number four is to consider a request by John and Lisa Marshall to rezone the property at 10308 South Chicago Road from A1 Limited Agricultural to RS1 Single Family Residential. Applicant is John and Lisa Marshall. Property owner, John and Lisa Marshall. <clears throat> there follows the legal description. Date of notice is April 15, 2020. Thank, thank you. Our final public hearing of the evening is a request to rezone the property uh, at 10308 South Chicago Road from A1 Agricultural to RS Single Family, RS1 Single Family Residential, excuse me. The purpose of this rezoning is to set the stage again for a, a, a subsequent land division, which the council will be considering at this, uh, this same meeting, uh, to divide that into four lots. Uh, lot one would be the existing home, uh, would retain about 6.4 acres, lots two through four, uh, which would be available for future single family residential development would be in a little of excess of one acre, so 1.15 acres each. The proposed rezoning is consistent with the comprehensive plan that was recently adopted for the area. And the plan commission after deliberation has recommended to the council that the rezoning be approved. This being a public hearing, anyone who has any questions or comments and who has registered prior to this meeting to appear via the teleconference, uh, please give your name, address, and proceed to address your comments or questions to the common council. This public hearing is now open. Thank you, Doug. Um, we'll make this first call. Uh, Kevin, anybody wishing to speak on the first call? We have Lisa and John Marshall. Uh, please put the Marshalls on. Uh, name and address, please. Lisa and John Marshall, 10245 South Camden Court, Oak Creek, Wisconsin, 53154. And we're here to answer any questions that may be um, posed. Thank you, Lisa. Um, Second call, anybody wishing to speak? Yes, at this time. Third and final call. All right. We do have one caller. Um, if you want to raise your hand, it's star six, if not. All right. No, no. Okay, I don't want to move too quick here. <laughs> I'll give it just a second. Okay, yeah, I'm a little get... name and address, Can you please. Hear me? 
Yes, Na Go name and address, yes. please. We're in a pub. Go ahead. 3920 East Ryan Road. My question is, where is this property? Can somebody describe it for me so I understand where it's at? It is, it is basically on the corner of Chicago Road and East Oakwood. Chicago and East Oakwood, which corner? It would, okay, thank you. It would be the Southeast corner, Rosemary. All right, thank you. I have no other You're comment. welcome. Okay. Um, that was the third and final call. We'll now close Close the public hearing, Kevin? Yep. Okay. And we'll move on. Questions from the council? Anything? Nothing? Nope. Okay. Um, I guess I'll just comment on, on behalf of planning. Uh, the marshals came in. Um, I, obviously, um, they're looking to develop it later on and and leave it as natural as possible, but divide up some lots. That's, that's the premise of it. So. And maybe just to preface that as well, I mean, the, the having sufficient single family lot inventory is one of your objectives of the strategic, strategic action plan. And this does further that objective. Yes, thank you for that point, Doug, well taken. Um, if not, motion please on, uh, what are we on, 11? 12. Uh, 12, so I'm yes. I'm gonna make a motion to adopt ordinance 2974 Rezoning the property at 10308 South Chicago Road from A1 Limited Agriculture to RS1 Single Family Residential. Loracle second. Roll call. Alderman Kurkowski. Aye. Laura. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Toman. Aye. Gail. Aye. Guzikowski. Aye. And item 13 <clears throat> is approving a certified survey map submitted by the marshals for the property at 10308 South Chicago Road. Doug? Thanks, and once again, this proposed CSM seeks to implement the recently rezoned property into the four parcels. Again, lot one retaining the existing home and the bulk of the property, lots two, three, and four, uh, a little more than an acre each would be uh, available for single family residential development. The bulk of the wetlands, uh, which are identified on the CSM, uh, are on the, the, the larger parcel uh, and some extend onto lot two. Those are all shown on the map, as well as the buffer areas for that. Uh, the map, again, seeks to implement, the CSM seeks to implement the recently rezoned portion of the property, as well as, again, achieve, moving us towards the objective for additional single family capacity as per the strategic plan. Uh, with that in mind, Plan Commission has also reviewed this proposed CSM, and they have recommended to the council that it be approved subject to uh, two conditions. First, that all green infrastructure and stormwater management requirements are, are met for the uh, property. And that's just a new thing with the MMSD. If you're developing over a certain uh, amount of square feet, there's a green infrastructure requirement. Uh, applicants are aware of that. And the second standard condition that reflects that any technical changes or corrections be made prior to recording. Thank you, Doug. Uh, questions concerning the properties? Uh, Ken? Uh, Doug, uh, it's not obvious you've uh, from here, uh, and I wasn't that funny. The, the area on what is labeled on the, uh, on the CSM as lot number one, this is the general area kind of to the east of, uh, of Highway 32. Yep. It appears as though that could be another lot itself. Is, is, is there something prohibitive that, that was not labeled an individual lot itself? No, I, I think that was a combination of things the, the extensive presence of wetlands there, as well as the marshal's desire, uh, as they've related to me, to preserve that in kind of its existing condition and the kind of the kind of the keeping the aesthetic of that lot without, you know, further subdividing that. And okay, I, I, so it wasn't anything that the city imposed there with the strictly land implications there. So yeah, I mean that was a, that was a choice that was made by the okay, subdividers. Cool. Any other questions? Seeing none, motion. Someone will make a motion to adapt resolution number 12158, approving a certified survey map submitted by John P. and Lisa D. Marshall for the property at 10308 South Chicago Road. Oracle second. Roll call. 
Alderman Lorick. Aye. Duke Nant? Aye. Toman? Aye. Gail? Aye. Guzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. Okay. Item 14 gets us to new business. It's consideration of a resolution ratifying an emergency proclamation one extending the public health emergency in the city of Oak Creek in response to the COVID-19 coronavirus. Um, Andrew, are you giving us some hit, a yeah. little bit of back background on this? Yeah, so everybody's start with Melissa. If you don't um, with Melissa. So everybody's well aware of what this concerns because I think it may confuse some. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Council. Uh, bottom line here is in terms of where the city stood, our community in the last many days, the expiration of our emergency declaration was due to expire on the 17th of May. So back on March 17th, when things were new and fresh and we weren't sure where the world was going to take us, we had not arbitrarily, but intentionally set um, a date for that emergency declaration to expire unless it was otherwise superseded by some other order declaration or whatnot by the council. So 60 days is what we had in that document. Given the fact that we were going to be convening this meeting, there was no special meeting of the common council between the time of your last regular meeting and May 17th. The mayor did sign a proclamation extending the declaration of an emergency. Now, that is very separate and apart from any orders that may be in place or considered by this council or determined as necessary. This relates more to, if you recall, the language of that emergency declaration was to take the necessary measures to have the community public health officer and the director of emergency management services take all reasonable steps to prevent the exposure and spread of this COVID-19 novel coronavirus and to lend to purchasing as needed. Since then, the council has approved of the intergovernmental agreement for PPE procurement with the county and other communities in Milwaukee County. So this is an extension for the purpose of literally preparing for what might be in the next phases for the community. This is not cementing or ratifying, if you approve of this proclamation, any other specific orders. That is something that is going to be discussed with you next. And in terms of that general declaration, it certainly puts us in line for any potential reimbursement. If there is FEMA funding, we would not want to be in any position to say, if there were some sort of pecking order, yours was a community where you no longer had your emergency declaration in place. So in terms of any potential reimbursement, we want to keep the city in the best position we can. So that's the proclamation that has been signed before the expiration of the order that you approved. Uh, by law, any proclamation that is issued by our mayor comes before you for approval uh, or consideration at your next regular meeting. Oh, Andrew, would you just to add on to that? I mean, the big message, the big piece in that is we we don't think that this could be entitling criteria to federal funds for necessary expenditures from FEMA or the federal government. We don't think that that's in, as Melissa put it, the pecking order that this is prerequisite. However, I don't have as much faith in the federal government as some others do, and I don't want there to be as money as beginning to dry up or there are beginning to be, uh, you know, kind of reimbursements from FEMA to local, local communities through the states. I don't want this to be some sort of limiting criteria that we otherwise would have. Um, we kind of bounced ourselves out of the equation of federal reimbursement. So this is really maybe a belt and suspenders approach to uh, to what we, we, we feel is uh, availability of FEMA funds. Bridget and I are both, uh, have both uh, been on as part of the administration team uh, with the EOC kind of monitoring and Bridget much more so monitoring the federal, uh, the FEMA reimbursements through the states. Uh, as the state has its own emergency declaration and that is statewide, it's not as though they're declaring a county in northern Wisconsin because of a flood, uh, an emergency area or something like that. The state's or, uh, emergency uh, covers the entire state. But again, 
just a little belt and suspenders here. We don't want to be bounced out of some sort of reimbursement down the road uh, because this wasn't in place for our community. I mean, you could you can see somebody leveling the argument of what do you mean you weren't even in any sort of a you you weren't in any you know different state than you otherwise are right so uh, we're we're hoping to just uh, batten the hatches a bit and make sure that that's not a, a limiting criteria for us moving moving down the road okay questions alderman dukniak third district oh sorry steve alderman kirkowski first district um I guess if you're saying we're doing this just to make sure we are uh, have our foot in the door for federal funding or federal funding or reimbursement. That's one argument that can be made. But my problem with this resolution is that there's no end date. There is and an I, end date. Turn it over and read. What's that? It ends July 21st. Read the, read the entire document, please. Uh, on the emergency proclamation. I so I was looking at the, the resolution and the proclamation. When, when's the end date? July 21st, Alderman Krakowski. Thank you. And to that extent, I can say that it's intentional in consultation with staff to the extent of, we don't know how far out we need to go and we don't wanna be bringing it back to you prematurely. But to that extent, if there's some uptick of whatever need in terms of businesses reopening and assistance that we can provide internally to City of Oak Creek staff or. And it can and it can be revoked or extended if needed. Oh, I apologize. I didn't I didn't go back to the to the, uh, the other side of the piece of paper. Thank you. I have nothing further. Rich. I made the same mistake that Alderman Kurkowski did. We're going to read the packet. It's an important reminder in case we didn't have it in there as well. So appreciate that. Any other questions on 14? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Cam. Um, and Dan, you would do more than anybody. Uh, or Andrew, do you have any feel for um, what your, uh, your colleagues, your uh, other mayors are doing in terms of this? They're probably doing the same thing. Bridget's been on most of those calls. As Andrew said, we don't want to limit ourselves on any possible reimbursement we'd have. Um, so I think, I think Andrew and Melissa summed it up best. I, I think they're probably all over the board with how far they initially extended. You know, 60 days might have been a barometer for some, not all. It could have been 30. They might have done another 60 after the, you know, so they could be in varying stages. That I don't know if there's been any dialogue with the municipal attorneys groups on you know, is this is it is everybody kind of doing this about the same time? But I think this would be very consistent across most the, the board. Most of the flavor through the ICC is for everybody to try to at least keep pace and do the same time. I think it is consistent, Alderman Gale, from the discussions I've been having with other colleagues of mine. It's a little bit uh, hard to track in terms of when those council meetings are, but I know that at least one community was out to July 21st as, as well. The um the emergency order uh, um, shares equally. It, it, it sounds as though with the uh, health officer and the EOC chairman, or however, however it's phrased, is in terms of its ability or assigned responsibilities or powers in that act. Does 252.03 assign the same power or not? I think that this relates. Yes, it could. I guess this is my answer. Are only one. Is 252.03 just to the health officers or to, is it the EOC? That is to the health officer. I think that the EOC would be under Chapter 323 of the statutes, okay. and that is both consistent with your original resolution, and I think that that lends certainly to where we are in terms of decisions that have been made and we've been interpreting for the past several days, meaning this emergency declaration lends itself towards that specific authority for those particular situations in our community. I can. Anything else? Mike, anything? No, I'm good. Thank you. Chris? I'm good. Greg? Okay. Uh, seeing nothing else, motion on 14. We will move to approve resolution 12160-051920 ratifying emergency proclamation number one extending the public health emergency in the city of Oak Creek in response to the COVID-19 coronavirus. Please call scale second. Roll call. Alderman Dukniak? Aye. Tillman? Aye. Gail? Aye. Guzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. Laura? Aye.
And item 15 is a discussion on the community reopening plan related to the COVID-19. Andrew, you want to start us off? Yeah. Sure, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll turn it over to Darcy real briefly, and then and then obviously the point of this whole thing tonight is to, the, to open it up to the council to have a, a discussion on our reopening plan. But I uh, first want to stay, since some of you commented, uh, I think this whole thing is like analogous to my, my hairdo, uh, my quarantine hairdo. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it probably went a little too long, and, and no matter how I tried to tame it, it was disagreeable with somebody. So um, <laughs> maybe I did or didn't do that intentionally this evening, but um, I understand, and, and, and this has been, uh, to preface this in this preamble, this has been one of the most trying times uh, we all will have in our careers in public service. It's probably one of the most interesting and intriguing public policy debates that, that we may ever encounter. And why is that? Because I, there's not a lot of things that happen or go on or the actions we take at the local government level that absolutely impact everybody. Every single person of our constitu collective constituency is somehow impacted. And there are also, uh, in, in this fascinating public policy debate, there, there is uh, you know, no consensus among the population. Uh, the, the opinions are diverse. And we know that the opinions are diverse among your council. And uh, what we've been trying to do over the last probably 60 to 75 days now is, is serve in the best interest of the public uh, and allow you the ability to do what it is you do, and that's govern the people of the city. So what, whatever actions that have been taken uh, in the past, uh, we, we are here where we are tonight, but just know that we, you know, we always pull the rope in the same direction with our common council. Uh, we are, you know, we, we are unified in, in your next steps for this community. Uh, and we're here to help you, uh, help you get through this discussion and really pull everybody here through this knot hole of COVID-19 because, uh, you know, it's real tough to please everybody on this one. And, uh, you know, our community health officer down the line, our, our, our staff in the health department, police and fire administration, our, our management staff on the EOC, you know, they're, they've really been uh, working tirelessly to, to pull us through this. So I hope through that lens and a little bit of a, a little bit of light humor, we can we can move to uh, what the council thinks is in the best interest of of our public and our businesses and and uh, the really the staff moving forward. So um, with that, Mayor, if, if, unless you have anything, if we could maybe have Darcy kind of give us, I think the plan was to give us a little bit of an update on the public health situation and some of the metrics and then really get into the supplemental documents in the council packet. And that's uh, quote unquote, the reopening plan uh, that's put forward. I would also add that, um, you know, the politics of this thing and the, in the, in the messaging, um, you know, we were prepared this evening to ha have a discussion and about five o'clock today, there was a, a, a press release, a countywide press release that stated something along the lines of the 18 suburban communities are poised to reopen. It was in the Viz Journal at five o'clock. Uh, and just to let you know how some of this is going, uh, we as a staff and Darcy specifically requested that we not be a part of that press release and be mentioned in that. So. Some things are have you know kind of gone in, in terms of the messaging, uh, you know, have gone a little more of a political route than we're we're accustomed to as a staff. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know that uh, if you see that article after tonight, uh, we we did specifically request to uh, not be mentioned. And as was the case at noon yesterday, there were a few other communities, their chief elected officials on the call and staff, uh, that said, I, I have a I have a council meeting, lat, you know tonight or I have a council meeting tomorrow night right now. So, you know, we'll do our own messaging. We'll do our own thing. So we understand the importance of, you know, uh, really obviously being collegial when it comes to best practices and, and getting on the same page uh, from a health metric standpoint. Um, but we also understand on the flip side, the importance of doing what's best at the, at the very local level. And that's in the city of Oak Creek. So uh, with that, um, turn it over to Darcy. Just very quickly, just to comment on that too, and, and when you got into these these ICC meetings and everything like that, health officers were on, mayors at times, city attorneys, um, sometimes they just took the, the page document too, and I can see how that could have happened today at five, and they just 
failed to omit Oak Creek on that on that because uh, it was clear we were coming to council and we were picking our options and what we were going to do. So um, just one other note, not just Darcy, but well, Darcy in particular, keep in mind, she's been working like crazy uh, weekends, the whole deal to help put these plans with these ever changing numbers, conditions. Um, I, you know, I just really want to give a bump out and a shout out to her as well as the rest of the staff. Uh, the city, for the most part, has performed very well, which has led to a lot of phone calls that go, what's the big deal? We're running as normal. That's a credit to the management here at the city. They do their job so well, it's hardly noticeable to the public when we're in a pandemic. But um, I'm going to leave it at that for Darcy. She's going to explain where we're at and uh, how it all pieces together. So, Darcy? Thanks, Mayor and Andrew. Um, and also just wanted to reiterate my commitment, like Andrew and the mayor mentioned, to really working with the council and letting you direct the next steps and for the health department to um, support that in the community and with, with the businesses. So tonight I wanted to just provide a little bit of data as I've done the past couple of council meetings and then get into a discussion of some potential options as we move forward in our COVID response. Mm. Um, so as of today, 122 Oak Creek residents have tested positive for COVID. We've had 904 residents test negative. 80 of those residents who tested positive have seen their symptoms resolve, have been released from isolation and are now considered recovered. Um, unfortunately, 11 of those residents who tested positive have died. Overall, we've seen that 13.5% uh, of Oak Creek residents who have been tested have tested positive. We're seeing that positive percentage come down as we see more testing, which is what, exactly what we want to see. We'd like to see that number between five and 10 for an overall positivity rate. I did look at just the last week of data and in the last week, only 5% of our residents have tested positive. So that um, is a really good sign that we're going in the right direction with, with testing and spreading the word in the community. Uh, this graph shows the new positive, uh, new daily positive and negative tests. So you can see that over time, we continue to see more Oak Creek residents being tested. Um, and as is evidenced by the blue portion of each graph, or each bar rather, um, most of the residents being tested are testing negative. Hey, Darcy? Yep. Just so you know, I think your uh, screen sharing is paused. Oh, all right. Thank you. Hmm. Um, right now, we only see the actual PowerPoint screen at the slideshow. So when you hit share screen, there's an option to choose what screen to okay, share. Okay, I see. Yep. When I when I um, yeah. Let's try this one. Better. Thank you. That's really weird. What's that? I know you can't see the screen on the other side when you share. It's really okay. awkward to, to yeah. be in control. Yeah. So, so there was that first graph where I talked through the numbers. You can also see the Milwaukee County and state numbers there. This is that second graph. So this is showing each day the number of residents getting tested. The gray portion of the bar is residents <laughs> testing positive and the blue is negative. So as I mentioned, most are testing uh, negative and we are seeing an increased number of residents getting tested. This graph is, uh, I took a look at each week and what we've seen happen each week since this started about two months ago. Uh, again, the gray is the number of positive tests, the blue is negative. Um, so you can see that we saw a small, a small kind of peak here in Oak Creek this, about a month ago, second week in April, and we saw 23 residents test positive in one week. Um, since then, we have seen a slight decrease and kind of we're maintaining at the number of positive test results coming in. Um, but as evidenced by the blue bars getting larger, we are seeing quite a few more people test negative over time. Just a couple of other relevant data points. Um, out of the residents who are testing positive, 28% of them have been hospitalized at some point during their illness. We have seen that hospitalization, hospitalization percentage come down. Initially, we were seeing over 40% of our residents testing positive hospitalized. Uh, what that tells me is that initially we were testing only the sickest individuals and many of them needed to be hospitalized. We have now moved into testing, having testing available for any symptomatic person which means that fewer people testing positive are, are hospitalized. And again, that's another thing that we look at as a good indicator of if we're testing the right amount of people. 
And when we look at outbreaks, we talked a little bit about this last time, but we're, we do our best to try to connect uh, positive cases and figure out where they might have been exposed and become ill with COVID. So we see about 58% of our uh, residents who test positive, we are able to connect them to an outbreak or a cluster of cases. So 39% of them are connected to a long-term care facility, and that could be here in Oak Creek or in another uh, municipality. They could be a resident or a staff member. 9% uh, of individuals testing positive are connected to a healthcare facility, and 11% are tested, or, or, excuse me, are connected to another workplace or a business outbreak. Uh, so as we move into the next phase and we're looking at reopening um, all of our businesses, um, there, are, there are just a, some th steps that the health department has been taking to help businesses uh, be ready for that process. So we've really spent the past week since that emergency order was issued, communicating guidance, providing support to businesses as they start working through that process. So we worked with Leslie to update the website and to develop a page really dedicated to reopening resources. Uh, we've linked the guidance from the Wisconsin Economic Development uh, Corporation, the CDC, OSHA, um, and we'll be linking some tools that we're working on developing as far as signage or screening tools that businesses might choose to implement as they go through this process. Uh, we've, we've provided direct communication to many businesses that they'll uh, likely be able to uh, reopen at least in some capacity by the end of the week. Um, and we are in contact with the Chamber of Commerce to talk about collaboration on getting that messaging out to businesses, sharing resource and really um, really encouraging that strong communication between the health department, the city, and the business as, a, as we work together through this process. Um, so with this reopening process, we, we do anticipate um, challenges, namely around seeing more individuals becoming infected. Um, it's only natural is that as people go out back out into the community and more public spaces, have contact with an increased number of people that we will see more disease spread and that is that's expected and we've been preparing for that. Um, so as we see an increased number of positive cases likely coming over the next month or, or two months, we want to make sure that that testing capacity is built up, which it has been, and that testing is accessible to all of our residents. So we work to share information about testing sites as they, as they come online. We have been exploring options for um, bringing a temporary testing site closer to Oak Creek that might be a, a more accessible option than some of the healthcare centers. So that's something that we are always working with our partners to increase access to testing. We also know that our healthcare partners are monitoring their ability to care for individuals who are sick. So we're, we're constantly, they are constantly reporting on the number of COVID patients, the number of beds available, ICU beds, ventilators, um, and that's really important feedback to know if they are able to handle the surge that may come. Um, and we've also heard a lot about contact tracing. So it's really important that local health departments have the ability to reach out to individuals who are testing positive, to identify individuals who might have been exposed, and then share information and ask them to quarantine in a very timely manner. That's the best way to control the spread of disease. We would also expect that we'll see additional outbreaks in businesses or workplace situations. And again, we know that lots of people just spend time there and they're often hard to uh, implement those, those social distancing practices in some of the businesses. So as we see those cases in businesses, uh, we've already been doing this and we will continue um, to work with the businesses to think through some of the prevention strategies that they might be able to implement to either stop or prevent the spread of disease. We also work with them to do that contact tracing through the business, so which other employees might have been exposed and what are the best steps to protect them and other employees. And then in some cases, we need to talk about a, a potential temporary closure. This is evaluated on a case by case basis, but if businesses are having a hard time controlling the spread of disease or too many employees are infected, that might be an option for some businesses. On that, on that point, Darcy, can I, can I interrupt just for a second? Sure. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, Alderman Mike Tolman, Darcy. Um, on that last bullet point, uh, businesses, um, or uh, what was uh, workplace and business outbreaks under that last uh, slide. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh no, here, okay, I see it. Uh, temporary closure, does that fall under, is, is that translate into a enforcement issue uh, with uh, enforcement uh, possibly being initiated by our health department or how, how does that work? 
Sure, that's a good question. So um, we would always try to work with the business. And, and in most cases, what I think health departments are seeing is a voluntary closure. So as the health department works through what's going on with the business and talks about potential strategies, uh, we sometimes see that it's just really hard to get a, a handle on the spread of disease without taking that pause, that closure. So most businesses are, are will do a voluntary temporary closure. That might be a, a, a period of time for cleaning or just to kind of keep the employees out of the building and away from each other. If it were needed, you know, the health department does have the ability to issue an order if it was absolutely critical, um, but that's not something that I would anticipate needing to do. Um, and if it was, you know, it would be, a, again, a discussion about what are the best steps to, to get a handle. Okay, I guess that doesn't answer my question. Could, can the health department step in and close that business? Yes, be my health, yes, I apologize. The health department does have the ability to issue an order to close a business if need be. Okay. Right. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, so the first option as we think through where we might go from here um, would be we, we could issue a subsequent order that would go into effect on Friday and would outline the next uh, phase of reopening and COVID response. Uh, a benefit to this option would be that benefits, uh, excuse me, businesses uh, would be required to reopen safely and slowly and that could minimize the, the risk of significant disease spread. Um, challenges would be enforcement. So obviously it will be very challenging to monitor what businesses are doing. This is not something that we want to be doing um, here in Oak Creek. We really want to be working in a collaborative nature with them. Uh, additional challenge could be just the confusion regarding if, if we are doing something different than all of the communities around us. It's confusing for businesses as well as for residents and customers to, to figure out exactly what's going on and what's allowed in a particular community. A second option could be to strongly encourage businesses to implement a phased approach to reopening. So benefits to this option would be that all of businesses would be allowed to reopen um, and there would be a strong collaboration between the health department, other city departments and businesses as they work through the, the reopening process and phases. Businesses with this option might be more likely to implement safe business practices and, cont and to contact the health department with questions or concerns given the voluntary, voluntary nature of the relationship and collaboration. Um, challenges, of course, a business would, would be able to choose if they incorporate public health strategies and guidance to reduce risk to their employees and their customers. Um, and we may be more likely to see a spike in positive cases if we see businesses who are not adequately putting protective measures in place. A third option uh, is that all businesses would be allowed to open kind of without that collaboration or guidance piece from the health department. So again, benefit is that those businesses are reopening. Uh, challenges is that again, they may choose not to implement some of those mitigation strategies, which may pose a more significant risk to uh, employees and clients of that business. We might see a spike in cases. Um, and also without that active collaboration and relationship building that could go on with the health department, they may be less likely to proactively reach out if they have a question or a concern or they're in the beginning of um, an outbreak or situation, um, which could increase the risk to employees and customers and make it harder to uh, get that situation resolved. Um, so from a purely public health standpoint, an order is certainly the strongest way to control the spread of disease and protect the health of the community. However, given the great need to reopen and re safely restart the, the economy, um, as well as the confusion that could result from a variety of varied responses from neighboring communities, um, I think that the, between balancing all of those needs, I would recommend option two, um, that we strongly encourage a, a collaborative approach to reopening. Um, Again, this collaboration, I think, is really is really crucial to making this process successful. The health department has the opportunity to provide guidance and tools, support for reducing the risk, <laughs> to work through challenges as business encounter them. And the phases that are outlined in this table can offer a roadmap to businesses who are looking for guidance on how to safely reopen. We certainly have heard from businesses saying, what exactly should I do? I'm ready to reopen, but I want to make sure I'm worried about my safety, my employee's safety. And they're kind of looking for that plan and this table could offer that. Um, on the other hand, we've heard from businesses who have outlined a very well thought out plan and something that works for their business and they would be free to implement that plan as well. It would be a choice. Um, again, uh, to reiterate, you know, we've already been in contact with many businesses over the past couple of months, especially over the past week. We know that they're ready to reopen, um, but they do have safety concerns and they want to make sure that they're making good choices. 
So at this point, I'm happy to answer questions or you know, start a discussion about what might be the best uh, fit for the Oak Creek community as we move forward. Uh, Darcy Alderman Dukniak, 3rd District, uh, you had um, mentioned that there, uh, you were reaching out to area businesses in regard to safe practices and guidelines, et cetera. Um, so Friday is the 22nd. That would be the day where that we could choose for businesses to open, the, the, the doors open up. Um, the communication that you've had with businesses, and I guess specifically restaurants and bars, because they haven't had the opportunity to open yet, I mean, are they ready to responsibly open? Are you hearing that from them? Um, you know, they, they've taken the safe distancing measures. They have personal protective gear in place. Uh, they, they know the sanitation or cleaning procedures. Are, are most of the folks that are out there right now that you've come in, in contact with or have had communication with, they're ready to go? Um, I, think it, I think it depends. I think some are certainly ready to go and some have said, you know, we were planning on maybe next week or the first of June to reopen. Um, but I think certainly all are, have started that, that planning process. Um, I think the, the benefit, especially with restaurants and bars, is that they're licensed facilities. And so the city and especially the, the sanitarian here at the city has a very strong relationship with all of those owners and operators. Um, so we've been working with him to communicate that messaging and, and he is, is ready to support them as they go through that process. But I would expect that, you know, as we get to Friday and move on, we will see most of them open, reopen in the next couple of weeks. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Uh, no, Steve, I, I just have comments. I have no questions. So I can wait until the, the question time is done. <laughs> uh, okay, I've got comments too, but there is one question I had on, on these business openings. Do we still have, or is there still liability involved with a business that opens? Uh, would be lax in following some of this uh, direction and taking uh, precautions. Is there liability involved with th that business being sued uh, in in a lawsuit form? Is that is that out there? Is that something Darcy wants to take or somebody else? We actually discussed it on a legal municipalities call. Um, we're sure that that question will come up both ways. That there will be incidents where people feel a contracted the COVID at a certain business and will sue because the precautions weren't strong enough or the cleaning wasn't there. Um, but again, it's it's going to work its way out as as, as things happen. So it, that- Well, that's, that's something I've been hearing. Yeah. So and, as far as when, you, when a business opens, doesn't follow the rules or suggestive rules and, and plays it on the safe side, you're, you're actually, it's in the business's best interest to follow some of these rules to avoid that liability. I, I think very much so. And also to put the public at ease that they're taking the precautions that they have a safe facility that you can enter safely. So um, they, it was very inconclusive, obviously. No offense, Melissa, but you get a bunch of lawyers in a room, everybody's got a different opinion. So <laughs> how it would go. Um, but, you know, they talked about there's going to be lawsuits flying back and forth both ways. You know, we've just in the work you do, we've seen, seen some crazy claims. So anybody can try to pin some liability on any any sort of entity out there, and certainly these are going to be these are going to be prevalent now. Whether whether the there is more liability given the strength, or I guess given the strength of the local order in being a local order, being you know quasi law or or a law, an ordinance you would pass or just guidance. I mean, that that's probably gonna be litigated for, who knows, how, probably until there's a universal vaccination. I mean, you could probably make a claim that you got the flu somewhere and they weren't doing something that they, they, they did or you know should or shouldn't be doing or didn't have good food handling practices or were out of touch with the local sanitarian who licenses them, you know, there's, there's a myriad thing, you know, list of, of ways to try to pin some liability on an entity. Very inconclusive in that regard. I just have a couple of comments. Uh, um, go ahead, Chris. I think uh, one one of the things from a uh, restaurant um, observation, mostly, you know, with the curbside um, pickups that they've been 
instituting for the last however long and all that people have been going, um, I've seen really a, a good um, ownership from from these business owners and um, restaurants that we've you know done our pickups at that um, have they've really taken us serious. So I think again, it's it's an incumbent on them to show uh, their their um, uh, clients that are coming in there that that they are taking us serious and that if if they're going to have them come back, that they're going to want to come back because they see that it's clean. They're following all these different practices. So that's why I would be um, in favor of the, the opening. Mayor, I'm sorry, I do, I do have a, a question Go before ahead. I make comments. Darcy, uh, where do athletic uh, fields fall into under the response phases, like the uh, soccer fields at Abenshine, baseball fields, Little, little League Complex, all those uh, mm -hmm. parks that have uh, baseball fields and such? That's a good question. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about summer events. Um, certainly it could fall under the gatherings, you know, if we look at how many people are, are getting together. Um, you know, we, we see the biggest risk when we see people close together. However, we know when people are outside, there's less of a risk than when they're inside. And so I think, you know, it would really probably be something that would be evaluated with each with each league or with each program. Um, certainly we've had discussions here at the city about you know the city rec programs and and how they can be safely implemented there's a strong desire to um, move forward with those things i know people are anxious to get back to them and i think there are some some actions that the different leagues or programs can take to make those um, as safe as possible i can i'm going to suggest if i even have to however it's uh, appropriate that any of those facilities like uh that we have at ab and shine any baseball fields, including the Little League complex or uh, baseball fields in the parks, they need to fall under the other category, and I'll explain why. As you know, I, I'm a baseball umpire, and if you put a baseball field in gatherings, you can't have a game because there's nine baseball players out there. Two teams is 18, coaches is six, and parents. So you've just eliminated anybody from having any type of athletic activity. So the various leagues that I'm a part of have gone probably three or four different ways, but they've all taken a reasonable approach with regards to players, where the coaches are going to be, each team is going to handle the baseballs themselves. They're not going to be handled by the umpires or anything like that. Parents are not going to retrieve baseballs. Players are going to go get them from the, own, from the team that's on defense. And parents are going to be requested to just be mom and dad and then socially distance themselves down the fence line. And you think about that. You see... Gatherings in homes and public venues is a cookie cutter approach to um, dealing with athletic fields. So it, it really has to be in the other category because you're going to have to let each individual league that has that wants to rent Abenshine for a youth baseball game. That league is going to have policies and procedures in place on how they deal with those baseball games. And so the soccer leagues are going to probably do the same thing. We're not going to, we shouldn't dictate to them that they can only have 10 people and then 50 people. You're going to decimate their season if you do that. So I want athletic fields to be in the other category. Right. And I don't disagree with you. I mean, certainly this table is just, is just guidance most likely. Um, and I think we've already been hearing from many of the, the coaches and the leagues have been calling the health department and we've been talking through some of those plans. And I, I'm in agreement with you that they have been very thoughtful about, you know, how to move forward safely. They obviously want to hold their seasons and their leagues, um, but they obviously don't want their, their families and players to be sick. So, um, right, I'm confident that there's ways to move forward safely with, um, with those programs. So long as so long as it has been stated tonight that athletic fields are in the other category. Um, one, one quick thing, yeah, just to help, help the, the discussion. I think if we build the blocks up here, I think the council should have a discussion on kind of which I'm not under any illusion. We're going to discuss option one much. So what kind of realm we're going to be in in option two and three and then 
get into the table because we knew very well, you know, the, the concept of large gatherings was going to be probably the most of the discussion tonight. So if we can kind of get a framework of we're kind of in the middle of issuing guidance, we're still we still want to issue guidance because if we go with option three, we don't have to dis really discuss anything more. It's kind of just a little more open ended and, and we're going to see how it goes. Uh, Greg, very go ahead. Alderman Lark, second district. Um, and maybe this is just me, but in my mind, option two, your recommendation, um, also something that I can see supporting. Um, ultimately, with option two, I feel that it doesn't really matter what category we put anything into because these are all guidelines that people are urged to follow, but nothing that we are out there enforcing and saying, you must do this, you must do this. You have too many people because you're a retail establishment, you're not a grocery store, you're not this, you're this. It's in the best interest of all of these businesses to work with the health department to follow these guidelines that the professionals and the people that have education and experience on these matters are suggesting um, ultimately to protect them from liability. And maybe I'm wrong, that's just how I feel. Oh, I, I mean, you're the right, category there are really guidelines. Um, just one more point, Park and Rex canceled all rentals till July 1st anyway so yeah, just through June Ju just through June but I mean the discussion July. you'll have on the next item is right it, is it number 16 uh the discussion you'll have on recreation I mean the 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 guidance because we're the entity issuing the guidance on mass gatherings uh is I would think prohibitive to us as a city entity if we're the one issuing the guidance for the rest of the entities that are out there, could, and I, I don't disagree with with Alderman Krakowski at all. Um, oh, you know, they're gonna they're gonna say thanks for the guidance. We have our own plan, and it's a pretty damn good one. And we're gonna go forward with our with our plan. You know, so I think as I mentioned earlier, if if we get in into a discussion and kind of settle on option two, if we're settling on option two, I'm not trying to steer the debate that way because I want to do more listening than talking tonight. I think if we're going to stick to going to stick to option two, then we can really get into the specifics because option, as I said, option three is a little more, you know, we're going to monitor the health health situation. That's about what it is. And a lot of people are going to make personal choices for their own family on, on how they handle and what they participate in. So. Okay, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Ken. Yeah, I just um, shed a little light on where I'm coming from on this. I'm, I'm really, really probably can't be pinned down to a certain option, I'd say. Especially as it's, you know, we're, we're kind of discussing kind of guidelines and kind of a global thing. I, I, I really want to, I think Steve was kind of picking at that too, or put it in the hands of the individual, you know, the club organizers, the bar owner, the restaurant manager. Uh, I'm really, I'm really about trusting that they're going to make a, a judgment uh, and be responsible as, as business owners or or team leaders or and individuals with, with the same kind of responsibility. They're going to make choices for their what's best for them and their family, as well as the business owner is going to do what's best for his or her business and the team sport leader or whatever is going to do best what's what they consider is best for their for their sport under what they know is uh, is good guidance. I think I mean no one's a fool. I think right now in this day and age, at least past month, everyone's become a a COVID, you know, at least has a, a decent base of knowledge you know, with Darcy's uh, resources here. I think they're, everyone can make fairly educated plans. Uh, I, I trust that they will and they should. Um, you know, and, and I'd like, you know, the nomenclature, I'd like here in what we, whatever we issue, I'd like it to make, make sure it's, you know, we want you to consider strongly what's going on. I don't want to look like we're mandating stuff. I don't want to look like we're putting in any new incubation periods that are kind of, and we've been through four of those already. You know, it's kind of kind of pointless, to, I think, to talk about incubation periods. Because it's got to be I really that the judgment of the business owner. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, they can pick. You know, they can look at this grid in the back and go, you know, that makes sense for me. That's where I'm gonna start, and kind of progress as they see fit. Um, and then you, know, the data and you know this, the progression of this is gonna kind of drive how it moves forward. Really, you know. Um, we can sit here and make all, all kind of plans and every business owner can make all kinds of plans. It's really going to depend on how it really, what, what happens. Uh, you could get spikes, you get local outbreaks, who knows, you could go away it could be, because it could, could become seasonal, who knows what's going on. But I really want to put the power in the hands of the people who are kind of on either side of the, of the door, you know, the business, the customer, 
um, and let, let them make their choices. You know, the business owner can advertise their restrictions, the customer can consider whether or not they want to deal with that, and everyone does how they see fit. Um, and leave, you know, Darcy there for her resources to really work with, you know, the really critical stuff, the long-term care facilities, the workplace things, making sure we got a good, strong resource for local testing that's fast and reliable, um, you know, rapid response opportunity. Um, so from my standpoint, I really want, want to make sure everything is kind of really labeled, you know, strongly consider or, you know, these are guidelines. It's really what I want, want to be very global and not necessarily get in the weeds on details and mandates and directions. So, um, Darcy, just to clarify with an option two, when you do have the incubation, you're really just look, you're really not, you're taking the data and it can change. I mean, we've seen it change drastically when they were in that old system with the gates and everything kind of went yellow and green. They were like one away from whatever, um, coming out of a Monday, I think it was on one of the calls. But anyways, with this incubation, it's really just as you see the data change for better or worse, um, it's it's really whether the guidelines loosen loosen up. They just keep following it, really, uh, unless you see it totally flatten, then you would loosen up even more. Correct on guidelines. Yeah, and I and I agree with Alder Ringel. I think you know what we're hearing from a lot of businesses, like you said, is they already have a plan. They know what they want to do. And, and, you know, they're oftentimes reaching out and saying, you know, sharing that with us and saying, does that sound good? And, you know, generally saying, yes, they're being very proactive. Other ones are saying, hey, I really want you to tell me some guidance. And I think that's where the, the table and the phases comes into play for those businesses who, you know, want to rely more, maybe don't have the resources or, or um, you know, just really want someone to, to tell them or make a recommendation. And that's where that table comes into play. And so certainly the when we talk about you know monitoring for 14 days after after we make a change and open up we would expect that after about 14 days we'll have an idea of how it's impacting the community so that's the incubation period of covid so as if people were getting exposed after those 14 days if people were going to start getting sick we would see that happening and that would tell us you know if the next step if we would recommend opening up at opening up to a larger capacity or if we'd recommend staying at that smaller capacity for a while um, but again, it would be purely, if we're going with option two, it's purely just a recommendation and guidance and, and each business and each customer gets to make their own informed decision. Yeah, and Darcy knows this as well. I mean, there's no shortage of, uh, you know, the WEDC put out guidelines for nearly every industry you can think yeah. of you know, very recently uh, that people can refer to. Uh, there are trade publications and, and trade organizations that are doing the same for their industries. I know I was dealing with my vacation rental up north, they've, you know, over how they're going to sanitize and do the things in, in, inside of one of those kind of places. So there's there's no shortage of resources in terms of people trying to be smart and you know, and proactive yet carry on with business and find some normalcy in how they carry on day to day. So, um, I mean, there's, you got, you've got your CDC, you know, your, um, those kind of, those kind of things putting out, you know, the kind of the really global health related kind of guidelines and then you got your industry best best practices i think and they're going to evolve over time and i think giving people the choice to do as they see fit i think is the best way to go well, alderman gill just to just to clarify clarifying question hopefully it helps the discussion are you you know you might be suggesting a bit of a hybrid where we we don't necessarily have you know this categorical assessment in our own guidance where you're just broad-based guidance giving them the direction of maybe some of those WEDC guidelines, which they've covered every industry, uh, safe uh, safe business practices, more of the general versus, if you're a this type of business, here's what a phasing might look for you. Would that be a fair it's, I mean, characterization? It, yeah, it is, but it's tough to enumerate. I mean, mm -hmm. it's hard to put that in a document. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's easier sure. for me to say. That's what I like to see. But how do you really put that out there? It's, where it's useful. We, it's, we have a, we have a, we, ba you're basically talking about a cool, a toolkit that suggests a various uh, listing of resources they can go to and, and, and do, and do the, do the things yeah, that they I should I mean, do. I was, you know, perusing some of the other cities, what they put out in terms of their releases yeah. today. And, you know, some of them have done that. Some of them are, you know, have at it kind of thing. Yeah. Some are very, you know, still relatively onerous. So I'd, I'd kind of like to lean more towards giving choices to people. And Alderman Dukniak, 3rd District, um, I agree with Alderman Gale somewhat. I, I'm just looking at option three and the, the, the opening sentence that all the businesses are allowed to open without 
the encouraged phasing. So that's the document that Darcy has provided or recommended safe business practices. Why, why wouldn't we provide recommended safe business? Yeah, recommended yeah. safe business practices. Um, okay. So yeah, Andrew, and to your point, yeah, kind of that will recraft or the, that statement or make it a hybrid policy. Not to me that option three makes sense and, and doesn't make sense. I mean, we, uh, we won't have them to have to adhere to any phases. We certainly want them to engage in, in safe business practices and we can, we can publish or recommend some guidelines. Mm -hmm. Let's see that we're part of phase three. Hey, we recommend 50 people for public gatherings right now. And again, we recommend that. So that's, that's a point of discussion because they'll say, okay, I don't want to go to WEDC. My business is in Oak Creek. What are you guys telling me? What are you recommending that, that I do or that we do? Uh, yeah, I, the only thing is that, Rich, I'm not sure if we want to get in the recommending business. It's the only thing I'm, at this point. Okay. That's well, the only thing I'm wondering about. But they're guidelines. Yeah. Yeah, I'm suggesting. Suggestion. Yeah, we I suggest. Don't mind, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't mind that. The, the, the nomenclature is a little, you know, a little quirky, a little funky. But yeah, suggestions. I like, I, I, recommendation phase, I think, is probably past. Whereas we suggest, and here's some guidelines that are out there that are produced by who knows whoever. Okay. Choose to I mean, I guess I, I just wouldn't want the feeling that, and maybe they do want us, they, they want city government to abandon them by not doing anything at all. I, I, I don't There's know. There's probably some. Yeah. But some probably want some cover. Right. And that's what I say. Hey, I, I sure would like some help or oh, recommendations. Over the last guidance. week, yeah. as, as things changed, the recommendations, the responsible businesses called up and asked whether, yeah. whether it was Darcy or somebody at the city. Uh, what's recommended? This is my type of business. So, Mayor, may I? Can, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to try and add on to what Andrew said earlier, <laughs> minus the hair. <laughs> but if Oak Creek City was surrounded, try and follow me. I'll try and try and. Oak Creek was surrounded by a moat. Okay, and we had this problem. We'd have no problems with whatever we wanted to do with regards to reinfection or or workplace stuff or contact tracing because and, and opening up Oak Creek to whatever way we wanted to because everybody would be on the little island of Oak Creek okay but the problem we have is that we're not an island so we have to remember that whatever we do here in Oak Creek, if the folks here in Oak Creek think that we're too restrictive, they're gonna go to New Berlin, they're gonna go downtown, they're gonna go to Racine, they're gonna go wherever, and if they get sick, they're bringing it back to Oak Creek. Does everybody kind of agree with that? So, and then folks in New Berlin may wanna come to Drexel Town Square and do something and then Somebody does something and they go back to New Berlin and they, they, they uh, test positive. I, having said that, I, I'm not in favor of option one. I just think it's too restrictive. You know, you've got people, I think the traffic on Howell has begun to increase a lot more. Uh, I see, um, I mean, a couple, you know, last week I saw a bunch of young adults playing a game of, uh, uh, tackle football out on the football field at, at, at the high school. I'm sure they weren't all from the same family. If they were, it's an awfully big family. <laughs> but you see, folks are going to do stuff whether we tell them they can or can't anyways. I mean, there were cars from Illinois just packed to the gills on the freeway the other day heading, and you just know they're heading up north. Kalahari is going to be opening up their water parks. So I'm not in favor of one. I think three is a little bit too lenient. Like Alderman Gale said, you know, people have to be responsible for their own actions. Businesses have to be responsible. We need to give them the opportunity to have a little bit of freedom and be adults about it. And if they're not, they're not. But we can't police everybody in the world until this thing is over with in two or three years, as some people are thinking. We can't send 
police out there to enforce social distancing, we, we can't. And I, although I like option two, I'm not in favor of the language that is totally contained within option two, because I think it, it, it kind of hints back to option one. I think the second paragraph, which says you would have to remain in each phase for, for 14 days. Well, that's kind of what option one is. All right. You got to remain in the, the incubation. Oh, it says, says the recommend recommend okay. recommendation. There's no concrete yeah. thing. The recommendation would be to remain in each phase. Right. Okay. But I think it's going to be taken as we are telling you, you have to do this because we're going to there, eventually, there. we're going to eventually come up with this and people are going to say, well, they recommend to do this and, and it's going to be misleading. They're recommended guidelines. Yeah. They're, they're going to act. They're well, it goes right back. To, then it goes business. right back to the first paragraph where I believe it should say the city of Oak Creek strongly encourages, encourage businesses to follow safe business practices and physical distancing and protective measures. That's what we were saying about. Yeah, but I don't want three. Yeah, but I don't. That, so. Yeah, but I don't want that language in there saying you have to abide by this or you have to do that. I want them to say. We're going to let you open. We want you to have safe practices. You know, take out the word recommended and somehow say, suggest that you use this. Because I don't like the fact that in phase B for retail establishments, you only allow eight people per thousand. Okay. Okay. So go you're, ahead. You're asking, Wrap it up. Wrap you're up. asking for my opinion. And, and as this is written right now, I don't like any one of them. Well, well you have. Well, okay, there's three of them, but there's we're three. going to provide her some direction and we're going to provide the cities and, and the businesses well, some direction. You have my suggestions so. with regards to modifying option two. Modifying of option two. I, I do. Okay. I do. Can I, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Mike. Okay. Uh, and all, all them in Mike Tolman. Uh, I'll give you my two cents worth here and uh, without any medical expertise, obviously. Um, I like option two. Phrases like strongly encourage recommendation, uh, collaboration, businesses may choose. Those are all, those, they all designate that there is no COVID-19 police here. These are, these are gonna be choices. And I like the language. Uh, it, it keeps the decision-making in the hands of these businesses and the public. And I think What's most important, the elected officials, with all due respect to our health department, I think this is where the decision should come from, from the council, from the alderman and the mayor, and our, with the help of our city staff. So I, I like this language in two, and I also like to incorporate phase, uh, phase C in this because this 14-day thing does not bother me. If you're already in phase three, if we decide to go there, and to uh, to uh, comment on Alderman Krakowski's uh, sports analysis here, it's gonna your little league's not gonna be playing on Friday. By the time this goes into effect, you're gonna be you're gonna be in phase D already, because this isn't gonna kick off in a couple of days before these sports events get going. So you're automatically in phase in as far as the sports analysis goes. So I don't have a problem with any of this. And I think the mayor hit it right on the head. This 14 day incubation is just a review after 14 days to see where we're headed. And to me, that's a responsible thing for the city to do. Um, there's one aspect in here. I got a call today with uh, regard to our, our, the church I belong to. There's a worship aspect. We have to get this community open because churches are really hurting right now. And they're, they're in dire need of keeping their congregations together. So I, th I think that's important that we get this thing going. Um, I think that's pretty much all I have to say on this. Thank you. Andrew, you were gonna speak? Just, I think Mike Alderman told me you bring up a really great point and I, I, I think it's meritorious to bring up a discussion with the council on, you know, we don't necessarily need to start at phase A. Maybe we're more comfortable chiming in here and doing the option two at phase C. So I think that's 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 great. I don't want to discount what Alderman Gorkowski said though, because 
there is, there is um, a different lens with which people view things when the government issues it. And while, although you have those qualifying, that qualifying language in there that we strongly encourage and we do that, people are probably gonna print off the chart and they're going to, going to be contacting the health department to see, can I go to phase two now? Can I go to phase C? So just the fact that it, it is issued by the government in some people's minds uh, does carry more weight than these are, just, these are just suggestions. I think it's just a psychological thing there. Um, so I think there is there is a there is a point to um, kind of trying to synthesize a little bit, having a discussion about where you're comfortable falling in in, in, in the phases to begin with. Uh, but the fact that there are phases, if we were to go kind of just, hey, it's option two, everyone, we're going with option two, that does mean different things to different people, despite what it, how it actually reads, just that it's coming from from a governmental entity. So I to 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 uh, Alderman Kurkowski's point. Greg, what phase are you looking at? Um, <laughs> Alderman Lorick, I guess I, I agree with Alderman Tolman. Um, I like the wording in option two. Um, I agree with option two. Um, I would just make note, I, I did speak to a lot of people this past week. Um, majority of them didn't necessarily agree with, but we had uh, very long conversations, um, very civil conversations. Um, one that sticks out in particular though, um, she did not agree with it, um, wanted everything wide open. Um, anytime the word order or regulation came up, she would start throwing constitutional rights and freedom and things like that around. But ultimately, at the end of the conversation, when I said, how would you feel about guidance or guidelines coming out from the city, guiding all the businesses? And she said, well, I can agree with that. As long as things aren't mandated, that there's strong guidance that comes out from the city, I mean, I could agree with that. And then people can make their own decisions. I mean, so I feel option two fits that perfectly. Thank you. Chris, um, what option phase, what are you thinking? Um, I just, I'll make it short and brief here. I believe option three is uh, leaves it uh, less muddy. You don't have to worry about the phases. You could uh, use option three and take some of the verbiage from option two and uh, redirect it down to option three and then just think it puts the uh, the onus and in, in the ball in, in the businesses of that court and what about you at so we can kind of yeah, start to yeah, wrap this I, up I'm, in your uh, direction i don't mind part of the language from what darcy has listed as option two i there's a couple of wording phrases i'd, I'd kind of slash or not slash i'd just to make it a little more qualified i'd, I'd delete the second sentence completely to be perfectly honest um, and it would be, if I had to pick a phase of your, you're putting my feet in the fire, I would lean towards everyone can start at phase C, but I would, I mean, I think the one problem with phase C is your, especially if you know, Mike's worried about, and uh, brings up the, 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 the church-based stuff. I know my, you know, the Catholic diocese issued some pretty strenuous guidance, but you know, the 50, 50 people is, you know, that's, uh, that's a kind of a gating factor for, for um for stuff so i'm i'm still in the camp of um letting people kind of pick where they want to be on the on the in the guidelines themselves rather than kind of saying we're starting here or starting there or um but i, I really do not have any any inclination to have any any um reference to any kind of incubation cycle or uh, um, i'm done with incubation cycles i think they've uh, squandered. Uh, just a, a, a quick comment. I, th I think, are we all in agreement that we don't want to issue any type of order? Is that is that correct? No, I think that's universal, Rich. I think we don't want right. We don't we don't want to do an order. We're, we're not we're not demanding that that people have to do something. Um, for, for well, I mean, we're 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 deciding on on an option tonight. That's you know, to some people, that's going to be an order. That's how they may perceive it. It may not be the way it's written. Or yeah, I, I think I, Andrew, I think Andrew's point is, has very strong merit that if, if it comes from the city, it's going to be considered semi, at least semi-official. Mm -hmm. That's a good word. That that's where I'm. You know, 
that's I, I you know if you put this thing out here you know and some some cities have chosen this reference this is a document we're following without any kind of context and this is I think I forgot who actually issued this the county county organization of health officers I'm not sure if we actually developed this but it was imported WEDC was their MMAC was Darcy, you guys Darcy, grabbed you it from all over go ahead Darcy yeah, the health officers jointly across the county uh, developed this. Yeah. Based based um, on the guidelines, right? Looking at some of the guidance that was put out by the federal government, the state government, and the other entities. Yeah, and there, there's the stuff on the back page too. The you know the code response. You know, this, I would swap a lot of the wording in there, but the, to consider using the words consider um, would, for businesses. And, and, and in any reference to the Milwaukee County Department of Health in terms of requiring anyone to follow that, since I don't believe they have any actually authority to issue anything to us. I have a quick question on the Yoke Creek um, Community Center. Where would they fall? That's, that's why I think, you know, whatever, whatever you do, you need, to have a, you need to have a discussion on gatherings of more than 10, 10, 50, or to be determined. No, that that is the heating factor, really. If you want to look at a phase, that is a, the most burdensome. Because people can, people can, I mean, the city, uh, as an example, people can coalesce 200 people together and stand at all four corners of the Lake Vista Park and use bullhorns to communicate to one another. I know that's a dumb and an extreme example, but I, you know, I think the broad, the, 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 the public has had a real, real issue with the broad brush approach, the categorical approach where it doesn't align with certain circumstances that are completely would be completely uh, safe and and you know tolerable in, in, in light of all and, this you know, stuff. In the church thing, I mean, you're you're talking you're one of the rare opportunities you actually have you know constitutional considerations at at the local level. So it's well, very very few churches are full these days. Let's face it, and that includes mine. Oh yeah. So there's plenty of room to spread out in churches. Yeah. So that's not a big concern. Just getting to that point of 50 is my was my point. But he, going back to this 19 this uh, incubation period, what what is so uh, punitive about if you go to phase C just hypothetically? And in 14 days, you're telling me in two weeks you can't make a determination to move to phase D because your phase C that you're concerned about is going to disappear. Uh, you automatically. My only point is I, I'm giving that the business owner the, the option to make that choice. Why wouldn't we want Darcy to look at it in 14 days to see where we're at? Is my question. Can somebody give me a logical answer? I'm not sure. I think she probably will. We can do it. You call a special meeting if you have to. If you have an outbreak, we want to we want to uh, discuss that. So I guess I guess here's the thing. She recommended phase two. It sounds like our option two. Everybody's pretty well set with option two for the most part, except maybe Ken's looking at three or Chris was looking at three. Um, you know, you take the interpretation. Mike's talking about churches and they got gatherings at 50 people. Darcy, is it possible that churches could go at 75% capacity based on square footage? Sure, and we actually have the faith-based organizations, which would include churches on a separate line. And the intention was um, to allow them most of the, you know, whether it's the archdiocese or, or their kind of governing, you know, leadership body, it seems that they're all coming out with best practice guidelines. So our intention was really just to allow them to refer back to those and implement those in their respective uh, church or other facility. So again, a lot of guidelines, uh, we're depending, again, and I, you know, Greg's taken a lot of calls, I've taken a lot of calls, for these businesses to do the best practices. Um, our, our enforcement would be education on them to go in and say, hey, you know, um, spread it out, maybe. But um, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know if we want to be in that business right now. I, we don't want to be in that business. But again, uh, there's a certain obligation probably to investigate and again i'm not gonna i don't want to go down this path now we got enough on our plate but um if if police were to be called out for a particular situation and you've seen it on the news the other night where a gathering gets down to the lake and there's a thousand people hanging out or something um and, and they'd be down there anyways even without a covid for a public disturbance um they'd have to, they'd have to do some sort of enforcement so not not on the covid if if there was just a public 
Steve finally woke public up. melee going on somewhere, <laughs> Steve. Um, so they, they'd be obligated just by the law to go down there with or without the COVID. So uh, again, I, I, we have to provide some direction. Uh, we're definitely going to open up the city in, in, in that capacity, and that's what we're oh, here. No one, Dar Darcy, who's, is there a city actually just issuing this as a press release? Or Darcy's not issuing this as a... No, uh, well... How are we doing this? We we do have uh we do have the bones of our press release drafted pending the outcome of this evening's discussion, but that's that's really not going to be the effective tool to communicate to the any guidance that we want to give the the businesses. They'll be contacted directly. Um, but 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 again, I, I think just the while I have the mic, um, you know, we specifically call out faith based organizations. I mean, if you look at and, and not at all disrespecting that point of view because that's been t much talked about but you know you can have a, a, you know obviously my big thing here is the gatherings that's my only issue with whatever you do i think you need to reconcile the discussion on the gatherings because we're you know these orders and not to discount the work the the governor's order the governor's orders around the country have been attacked because of their hypocrisy one avenue it's okay to do certain things but a similarly situated entity over here can't can't congregate or do the other thing so we can have a you know i don't know what the biggest church we have and a thousand people can go to church on a sunday or 500 people uh but you know we can't have two we can't have 51 people at a park playing uh you know even if they're not in physical contact with one another so i, I think you need to reconcile that and again if you go, if you were to say, we go with option two, we want to give the guidance on the chart out there. Remember, we're the entity issuing the guidance. So no matter how safely we want to have a 51, well, first of all, an 11 person event as a city, or no matter how safely we can have a 51 person event as a city, I think you are, uh, I think that is its own hypocrisy because we're the entity issuing the guidance. So. I guess if you look at the next agenda item, if you want to put in place the city giving guidance to entities on mass gatherings or gatherings in public venues, and it's 10 and then 50 people, you've kind of made that decision on the next item. And on other public venues and, and events we would have maybe later on in the summer. So I, I, want, to, I want you to reconcile that among you uh, because we 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 can't we can't issue guidance as a city and then as a city not take our own guidance. I think that would be a tough spot. So we might let that play out over the next couple of weeks. We've obviously canceled a couple of events in June, but I'd, I'd prefer you just have that discussion now on whether that's kind of in the works uh, or on a case by case, or we're not even going to touch it because you can do things with 50 people like a little league game that has great. Uh, plans in place to do that or a, a church event um, or, you know, doesn't or, it, or a Frisbee game. Doesn't that I, disappear, though, with phase C through to D? It's 50 at, at phase, 50 people max at phase C. C then, no, but doesn't that disappear in 14 days if things are copacetic? Well, it would be, it could potentially be successive 14 days, so you'd have 14 and then 14. Because you go, we'd be at phase A. Oh, we're starting at phase I'm B. Starting we're, at we're starting at phase B. I'm sorry. I'm yep. not following. Okay. Yeah, we'd be starting. So it at does B. disappear at phase D. Well, that doesn't say that on there. Well, it's it certainly does. You no, know, it says based upon availability of a vaccine, which is pretty yeah. vague. <laughs> well, that's, that's, pretty... that's like no guideline. <laughs> that's like you know. That's not going to happen. Let's, let's, well, then what do you do? I mean, let's, let's be practical. <laughs> then why is it there? Well, well, you know, here's another thing. If it, that, if it, it goes it, wide open, struck, struck as as if it goes wide open and the numbers shoot through the roof, then you got to get more restrictive. Well, and, and then you ain't even at 75% or you could regress. whatever percent. That's yeah. the question I wanted to pose to Darcy, Alderman Dukniak, 3rd right. District. Um, it, in consideration of option three, um, you would still be doing testing, correct? No, regardless of what option we choose. So... With, or or Somebody she'll get information uh, that tells what direction 
the numbers are going based upon whatever option we choose. So those numbers are going to help us. It's not, you know, people were saying in, in option number two, you know, we have that incubation cycle of 14 days because of testing. I'm get, we're going to do it in option three as well. We're going to, Darcy's going to continue to get information from areas that are doing testing. And, you know, even though they're getting tested at, uh, on Chase Avenue, the test says Oak Creek and Darcy gets that information. So, I mean, we're going to know if there, if there's a, an outbreak or a spike in our community, if we choose option three, and if we see, heaven forbid, we don't want to see it, but if we did see a spike, well, then we have to take some other measures or corrective measures. Well, you, you do it whatever particular to the circumstance. If it's a workplace outbreak, then you deal with it there. Right. If it's community, that's a whole different story. Yeah. You know, um, the big numbers with the the senior living centers, assisted living, et cetera. You know, are there going to be guidelines? And I didn't, let's see, long-term care. Okay, there are different guidelines that will govern those, or suggested guidelines for those agencies. Those seem to be the trouble spots for us right now. Other, I, I think the, and I'm not, um, Darcy could help out with the acronyms, but for the long-term care and the child care, it seems like there's other licensing entities that are going to have their finger okay. on that pulse and, and be giving them restrictions. Okay. So, right. We um, felt they were better suited to make those determinations given that they're more more familiar with those facilities and, and they you know license and inspect them on a regular basis. I would agree with that. I, I think really just to draw a distinction here, the, the difference between between option two and option three is really the chart. Because we're going to do, as a, as a health office, all of the same things, no matter if you do one, two, or three, in terms of the, managing the disease and all the follow-up and all of that stuff. The difference between two and three is really, in option two, you, you kind of have the whole chart and you give guidance at iterative steps of the, of the, of the, of the process. You give them a progression. And in option three, you'd be issuing them guidelines and directing them to additional resources, and you wouldn't have that chart. And right? you, you got the incubation uh, com a paragraph in, in, in option two also. So, okay. Yeah. But you, by and large, that's, I think that's the big distinction. You, you have a chart uh, in, in, in two or, and guidelines in an option three. You just, I, I, think we should, I think we're all going to come to the conclusion we just don't not communicate with the businesses the next two weeks and see what they do. There's going to be resources we can give them. And I think really that's the distinction between option two and three, chart or no chart. Yeah, if I had my druthers at this point, I would, uh, I would do the option three and provide the resources. And like I said, I, I, I lean towards letting businesses and people decide for themselves where they want to be in, the, in, in that progression. So others may have different opinions, though. So. Here. Yep, go ahead. Um, Option three is 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 nice, but I could live with option two if the the first and the first paragraph first paragraph sentence remains the same, but the uh, incubation paragraph is removed. I could live with option two. And I think it's just a metric on recommendation. Um, I don't. I don't but if you got if you got option two, then see where are you with this with this chart? The amazing um, chart. What do you, what do you what do you ponder with that? Yeah. I I'm at phase C, and again the the want to beat a dead horse as long as athletic fields are in the specifically mentioned in the other category, then then I would go for phase C. I, we've I all we've all said that if, if if things spike or something happens or the uh, some, you know what hits the fan, and we're we're going to have to revert. But it doesn't matter what we tell these people; they're still going to. They might just feel restricted to a point where they're going to go out and do whatever they want, anyways. So we, that's where we got to provide this leadership and say, and say, let the establishments, the businesses, and stuff take some responsibility, and, and let's move forward. And like I said. I could, for the I could live with, as a compromise, I can eliminate the incubation cycle. But whether it's there or not, Darcy and our health department is going to be looking at this thing right. in 14 days to see it, what that's happens. Just, so that's just whether, it's, whether it's written or not, it's going to happen. Right. Okay? Yeah. 
So let's not fool ourselves just because we eliminate that that phrase. Okay. <clears throat> so, and then and then also the fourteen day. The, the thing I like about the fourteen day. If you wanted to eliminate it, I'd compromise that way. The thing I like about the fourteen days is it refers to moving into the next phase, which takes us into D automatically. That's the part I like about it. Yes, but and, and it's her metric. So my 14 day is her measurement. Yes, I, oh yeah, I, I don't want to start with C. I would strike, I'd strike the number, the top line. But. Uh, we could, yeah, that, there again, it's a recommendation. Strongly encouraged is well. If these are recommendations, why don't we just go with three? Open everything, throw out the recommendations that we all have here, and we're still they're still going to be monitoring all this. Darcy's going to be still getting all the information. Mike, I like it when you. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I, at the end there, so you said substituting recommendation for strongly encouraged. Whatever, that, it, whatever, that, the, whatever the language. Like I said, <laughs> if we strike it, it's still going to happen. Our health department's still going to be monitoring it. But the fact that it moves us into phase D is the part I like on the 14 day. If we so see everyone can buy, I mean, the, the data is out there. Everyone can see where the hell. So, but this is in writing. It yeah. says we move to phase D. That's that I understand this. So if there's no spike after 14 days, that's what it says. We can go to phase D. Are you talking, is that correct? Are you talking, but we're talking striking that stuff. Is, well, so. I, I mean, I, again, I, I think Mike's point is there. She has a metric and a measuring device, and she uses it over 14 days. Whether it's there or not, think, she's going to use it. I think you, the business owners, are they're going to decide for themselves if they're ready to move to a full capacity oh. or... I'm not sure if, you know, two weeks, uh, uh, give her for the hell of it is what's going what's gonna to make a difference to someone running a restaurant. And I shared with Andrew uh, just... I'm just leery of that swing the doors wide open mentality as well, even though I'm, I am leaning toward three. It's just, it's just a little bit concerning to me. And uh, yeah, I guess well, you know, uh, they, to, they to like, compromise, I, I'm okay with two like Darcy and phase said, C. The, 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 most of them have some license of some sort. They're not going to put the well, problem to themselves. Be careful risk. with that because if it, that that's a slippery slope there. Well, I mean, reputation-wise, they're not going to. They're not going to want. But, but again, you know, with notoriety of uh, running a party with no guidelines or limits, they may have a, they may pack the place, and there's no way they could socially distance or even make a best effort too. If it's wide open, they can get the door. Yeah. So, I mean, they, I mean uh, they can have someone at the door. Good. Yeah, I mean, I'd really, you got to trust the business. If you're going to let, if you're going to intervene in any way, shape, or form, you got to trust the business owners who do what's in their best interest. Yeah, that and, always works. I and know. even even if somebody, well, I know, but I know people are people, and I know. So <laughs> somewhere along the line, you can't dictate at all. I I get it, but you know that mentality too. Then if everybody did the right thing, <laughs> I know wouldn't chief, need officers. Chief would be out of a job. <laughs> chief would be out of a job. <laughs> <Wouldn't> <laughs> <need> police. <laughs> yeah. So and you'll so, Alderman Gale, even if you have a restaurant that decides after two weeks or three weeks to just totally open up their place to full capacity, you're still going to have the public who is not going to be comfortable with that. And that's true. And they so, well, none of them yeah. operate at full capacity. Right. So but that's, you know, there's still, and, and I've seen, I've seen polls true. that said that some people still won't go into a restaurant yeah. right now if, if you open it up. Yeah. So, and, and, and I'd love to go to some restaurants, but I think I might be a little leery if the place was packed, I might, I might not, Oh, you gotta, go right away. People are going to self-select. So, they're going to look at the w websites. They're going to see they got these safety measures in place, or they don't. I'm going to look through the window and see the place is empty or places back. I mean, and there are restaurants that are going to be opening up in the next couple of days, and they're still going to offer curbside delivery for those people who don't want to come in yet, which so, is great. So where are we at, guys? I mean, we've been round the block with this about three times. So it's okay. Big issue. It, it is big issue. But I mean, are we getting somewhere, Greg? It looks like you want to say something. Well, I, I just if we're <laughs> saying where we're kind of sitting, <laughs> I would personally say I'm with option two, and I'd even start at phase B. And I only say that um, because number one, I know their guidelines. Um, as a parent of a senior and someone who's turning 18 within the next month. We want to have a party for her. We want to have a gathering. But if the White House, the CDC, health departments, whatever the case may be, is recommending a 10-person maximum, I know I can have a party if I want to, but somebody who knows 
how this is spreading is telling me it's not that good of an idea. That's what I'm taking into account. So I'm fully okay with putting the stringent guidelines, knowing very well that they can choose to follow these or choose not to follow them. But this is what the data is telling them. So option two, phase B would be my choice. Taking a stroke. The discussion and we're really just giving direction. We ain't voting on it. So yeah, we gotta provide our, uh, and again, Darcy, you put a lot of work into this. It is appreciated. I know it's probably tough to sit there and have your stuff picked apart by people that just looked at it. And I know you've been so deep in this, it's it's different. I mean, I look at it too and I'm just convinced they're guidelines, but uh, I've been hammered with that for a long time that they're, <laughs> they're gonna be guidelines. Mayor, Mayor can I take one more, one more stab at this? Please. <laughs> Maybe it's my personal opinion now that's creeping in. We can't have, we cannot leave the language on gatherings as our own guidance on a 10 person max or a 50 person max or determined based on availability of vaccine and then have any sort of, a, I, I think, a, 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 um, and you, you any sort of a discussion on the next agenda item if that's where you're going to fall on mass gatherings or, or, excuse me, gatherings in the homes or public venues. I think that's um, going against our own guidance, I think, again, is, is, a, is a hypocritical position. Uh, if, it's, if it's our guidance, the public should be wondering why we're not following it ourselves. And I think personally, I have an issue with not being able to gather across the board categorically, depend, not dependent on what, it, what you're gathering for, or what you're doing, or how far apart you are. What if you're flying kites? What if you're tossing a Frisbee 50 yards away from 25, 51 other people, whatever it is? And again, I think the vagary of phase D determined based on the availability of a vaccine suggests that we're not gathering with over 50 people until there's a vaccine in place. Great. I think we need to have, this is the last time I'll mention that, I promise. I think you need to settle on whether that's in or out or how you wanna modify it, wherever you're at with starting at phase, doing option two, uh, doing option three or starting at phase two with option uh, phase B or phase C. Where does the community center fall on this? Um option here in my opinion that would be that would fall smack dab in, in that ours and rentals oh, public, oh, venues, right? public, public venues, venues chris yep because the, my other question then andrew was and i had notes here the farmer's market have we have we canceled that for this summer we ha we haven't and that okay. that was um i mean now as you guys can see how all of this changes right. on, on a daily weekly basis uh when we had this this these terrible labels of essential and non-essential businesses, farmers markets were essential and we're ramping up to, I think it's a great example though, maybe Rich. And the staple I, of our of our and every other small community, rummage sales. What, how do you categorize it? Other? And so that's the, 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 on your point on the farmers market, I think yeah. a great example. Uh, we've have a, a, a book this thick with all the ways we're going to adhere to all of the guidelines, but they're hopefully, is going to be 51 people there or more at any yeah. one given time as darcy so, stated earlier open air venues are a little bit different um but again i andrew's right on with that thank you i mean that's, i think on. it's a really just way too broad to leave it at that gathering in homes or gathering at a public venue again there's no distinction between open air or or in a you know in an enclosed facility there so i think you really need to to flesh that out or, or put it out or have Darcy come up with something else and leave it at, you know, take it out and, and have her come back with some recommendations or, um, you know, think about that a little further because that that's that's a problem if the end game is a, is a vaccine. And I think that's what phase D suggests there. But Andrew, now a different category such as places of public amusement, are you suggesting that that would be at that 50 person limit as well? Or do we continue with the recommendation of, let's say, a phase C that, uh, yes, it would have a limit of a, on a capacity of 50%. Oak Creek High School football stadium, I believe, 
has a capacity of 5,000. So that means we'd allow a gathering of 2,500 there? And not 51 somewhere else. Right. That's, so, that's, that's a great, another great example. I think we're, you know, they don't fit into nice, neat slots. Yeah. And I, I think. Yeah, it's not a one size a fits all. Do, right? I mean, from Steve's baseball to, to what you're talking about, it, it's, it's a tough deal. Without a doubt. You know, and, and I do agree with, with uh, Andrew, when you get into this public venues, it, it specifically says to a vaccine. Well, that could be a year. Who, who, never. Who knows? It could be never. Yeah. You're correct, Ken. So, you know, I mean, and then the Mike's point, if if the numbers suggest and Darcy says it's flattened, I think the 50 goes away. Definitely goes away. As Mike said. Sure. <laughs> but, but again, it says determined based on availability of vaccines. So I think if, so, so let, let's play this out. And Darcy, I, please, I don't mean to, uh, this is your territory more so than anybody's, but phase C Say we start at phase Z, and in 14 days, we've, let's just say we've greatly improved. We move to phase D. What's the guidance based on the language in the chart on gatherings at public venues? I think most of us will be not going to have a vaccine. So I'd, I would be in favor of, of striking that in phase D. Placing that's, the word open? That's the that's discussion I opinion. wanted you to have. That's my opinion. We're not going to have a we're not going to have a vaccine in 14 days. No, we're not going to have a vaccine in 14 days. You know, I think that there's more to it than just the vaccine. We're looking at how many people in the community have been infected, and as we start to see this antibody testing roll out uh, more widespread, we'll have a better idea of how many people truly have been sick. Um, and then over time, we'll have an idea if having been sick offers that level of immunity where. We worry less about large gathering because many of those people have already been infected and they have immunity and we won't see an outbreak. You know, I think this table was really developed. The guidelines were developed looking at what is the risk level of these particular uh, businesses or gatherings or things like that. And anytime that we have more people together, especially in an enclosed space, we have a higher risk of disease spread in an outbreak. And that's that's what we were looking at when we developed these guidelines. The overriding thing too is, I mean, this thing's not going away, generally speaking. Right. Still here. I mean, we're yeah. going to be dealing, you know, unless it's unusual, this will be around for until there's a vaccine. So can we at least agree on uh, the vaccine thing in phase D? Can we strike that? Is I think you move. Is everybody on board with that? I think you put guidelines in place. That my suggestion, and Darcy probably doesn't agree with us, so I'll buy her breakfast tomorrow. I think if you're moving past 50, unless you're really looking at specific venues and events and in, in, in which we're not going to be doing uh, outside of our normal processes, but again, these are just guidelines. They're not a part of our review process for a special event, including our own. I think that you probably move down. If you have a phase D, it looks more like yes, with safe business practice or physical distancing and protective measures in place. Eating the 50? No, I, th I think if you look at phase D, phase D, phase D doesn't give any flexibility for, I, I, think, I think we could all get along with 50 and then hopefully that progresses very soon in a 14 day or 28 day or whatever day period that we're going to look at. Uh, but something needs to be done with phase D determined based on availability of vaccine. I think that's way too prohibitive because we're putting painting with a broad brush gatherings in public venues 51 people can be very safely done up to several hundred people could maybe be very safely done and i think what you could do is uh yes with the promotion of you know physical distancing and, and safe you know safety best practices open and wide open with those caveats is what you're saying those, Those are your words. <laughs> well, it but I, like what you're suggesting. something needs to be done there. Yeah, and I get it because now, you know, we're going to be voting on the 4th of July soon. So it's counterproductive for us to, to put a number on that and then say we want the fireworks. Yeah, that's counterproductive. Right. Or, or a later beer garden in the summer. Yeah, or, right. 
which I hope we, we well, I think we all hope we can do. Right. I can live with it. It just depends what, yeah, where we're going to be. So Chris, in answer to your question, th th with the impact on the community center, I think after 14 days, things may improve for them uh, in the ability to conduct business with gatherings of over 50 people. Is that what I'm hearing? Safe practices, right? With you, right. I've heard of Darcy on that, but I think that's the lens, the 14 days is just the lens that she'll view, uh, you know, look her, back. Her data. Her data will okay. be in 14 days. That doesn't mean you're gonna pass go. Okay. Uh, but, but it's not uh, necessarily the kiss of death either that they'll not be able to conduct activity for the foreseeable future. I mean, there, there's, there's hope based on data. Darcy's smiling. <laughs> There's hope. There is hope. Place of words. None of us here can predict. Right. Oh. You've got to see the numbers. It's plain and simple. So, is that, so are we kind of in option two, phase C, with the top part of gatherings and homes in D uh, getting rid of the availability of the vaccine? Are we all kind of in agreement for that one? Yeah, I, I would agree with, yeah. Option two, phase C, and then moving, removing the determined based on availability of vaccine, replacing Chris, it with the same language that's at the bottom. Chris, yeah, your input, because I know you were, you were just, yeah, no. Katie barred a door, open it up. Right, yep, that's where I'm at still. You're still there. Yeah. All right. Rich, how do you feel about the C, <laughs> phase I hate, C? I hate being a waffler. Um, <laughs> But I'm 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 back to that option two. And now as I'm reading this, City of Oak Creek strongly encourages. Well, or recommendation or suggests. What if I as a business owner, I don't agree with that suggestion? You're not gonna police me. So I'm gonna have a gathering of 100, 150, or 200 anyway, and I may be able to do that if I've got, you know. Lake Vista or Lake Park, that's a big area. Uh, safe social distancing, I, I, that may be a poor example, but right, Rich. that's why I'll go with option two because right. there's nothing, it's only a suggestion. There's no language in phase two that says there's gonna be COVID police on this. Right, street. and that's why I asked is, before, is, there is, is this an order? It is not. where the language is. <laughs> so I'm okay with two and Ken, that goes to your point of, of let the businesses then decide to do what they want, what they feel is, is in their best interest yet following safe practices. Yeah, I'm, uh, like I said, um, I could uh, tolerate somewhere in the middle of, yeah. of that if we're, if we're you know, consensus is growing around it, doing something of that sort. I'd prefer to do issue the guidelines and just kind of get out of the way personally, but uh, I really do, uh, do not want to include the Sentence two in the, in option two though, um, I think the the move really is going to be up to the business owner's comfort or team leader or whomever when they're ready, if they're ready, maybe immediately, maybe well, that, maybe yeah. never. But I would definitely strike the if you're going to adopt a, a, one of those options, I'd strike the top of the column of D. So replace it with something. So what do we need to? Well, the Fridays. Well, Andrew just needs some marching orders. Right, right. Fridays is it? Right? Well, actually, Darcy. No, well, Darcy's. I don't believe that's the way we're issuing it. She's she uses the health order. It's not a health order. She's, oh, she's going to issue the guidance to the. She's actually, communicating she's, with the business. She's still the one that'll that'll issue, if I am correct, with our guidance. So, am I correct in that? Yes. Give me a nod. Yeah. As long as it's made clear that the elected body made this. Right. And and that's what I've been telling people on my phone calls. Joyce was going to be here. She's been collaborative. She hasn't been on a rogue mission all her own uh, doing this. She's had, there, we've had more meetings in the last two weeks than probably we have in, in a normal year around here. Well, put it this way, two months. Well, what it the, months? the press release reads, uh, obviously, intentionally so that based on the collaboration and discussions with the mayor and the common council, we've arrived at X. We just need to plug in what X is. And okay. I, you might have been getting there, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that to you guys. Right. Andrew, I digress. These two are actually issued by the health officers. So. 
but the, they do also have a press release from yep. the community as a whole. Yeah, that'll come, that'll come, yeah. Communications, Leslie. So, we're at option two, phase three, striking, gathering language in phase D. Be correct with that? One caution. Yes. It is just guidance. So the community center could insert entity X could do Y. Correct. Darcy spent the first few minutes of the presentation describing that given there's more interpersonal contact that we will see cases go up. So I didn't want to put her in a box to say, well, yeah, we're doing phase C for 14 days, right? Then it'll get better because it, it, it very much will not. The cases will go up. I think if that I think that's a universal thought process. So I don't want to put a bullseye on Darcy's back to say in 14 days, Darcy said in 14 days we, we were gonna do, you know, progress through this thing. That that very well may not be the case. But again, it's only guidance. And as long as we're not pinning the city in on that uh, limitation on, on public venues, gatherings at public venues, which is, is important to me, as you probably determined throughout the discussion, um, to leave some flexibility there. Um, Doesn't the word minimum take care of that? She's not obligated to go after 14. It doesn't say that. When it says minimum, means it could continue for yeah, that's, longer than 14 days. That's exactly what I'm suggesting. It's not going to improve in the next 14 days when we start opening up bars and restaurants. And, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's pretty clear. So she would have that option to extend it because it yes. says minimum. Yes, and that's why I didn't want to give a false hope to the, you know, the specific discussion. Well, nothing to do with that. I, 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 if I had a choice at that point, I'm wide open and I'm issuing guidelines only. I don't want another Two weeks from now, another oh tough. You know, sorry. Regardless of what happens. No, I mean that'll be that'll be the side of the whatever. But I, I don't want another dictum two weeks from now. That no, sorry. No, I, that's a bad look. Just for the record, you regressed the conversation there, not me. Just that's for okay. the record. That's okay. <laughs> it was a nuance I came to appreciate. I'm just bringing some levity to the situation yeah. here. I'm just joking with you, Michael. <laughs> So and, uh, I'm confused, which is typical. We're dealing with 50 people maximums, but do we have to address again those limits at the spas or places of public amusement? You know, when I said you could potentially have a gathering of 2,500 people in our community under phase C. So how do we address that? I mean, do we leave it as is? And then again, the, the people will say, well, how in the world can you or, or make a suggestion that there's a 50 person gathering in my home or in my backyard or at the community center, but you're going to allow 2,500 people at the football stadium. That's the, again, just guidelines. Okay. But that's the, that's the drawback of having a chart. It yeah. doesn't address every situation. Okay. So does someone have some magic all-encompassing phrase that we can oh. plug in here? I don't, want to sound, I don't want to sound like a broken record. Please forgive me, but Darcy, I still want uh, under other that have it written down there and it includes athletic fields. My request, shall I say. All right, guys, we got a... Uh... Got to figure this one out. You can't move on until we got it. So uh, again, with, with the 14 days, that's just her measuring matrix. So if, if we go wide open, and the numbers shoot through the roof and she comes in here with an, another order, says we got to shut everybody down for a minimum 28 days now, or I don't know how it would work. I don't want to speak for her, I, I don't know the deal with this or she's got to shut us down 14 days is, is that where we want to go or do we want to automatically well, we'd just hopefully move, be a little more move uh, forward if, if a little fall. more targeted than a community-wide thing if uh, we have, have to experience this again but i digress at this point yeah given the fact that i mean andrew bring this up i i want nothing to do with a potential uh so sorry you know, you're stuck here, so I, I'm 
I, I lean towards giving people the opportunity to make their own decisions. And if I had my druthers or I had my choice there, given that, I'd go right to right to uh, option three and let them I'll refer to the guidelines as they see fit. But if, we, if, if, if she uses the 14 days and then she has to extend 14 days, they're still where they're at with guidelines and their businesses, they're still going to operate and do what they want to do, which is what everybody said. So they, right, they, they'll still be <laughs> able to operate, yes. just not at numbers that, yeah. So for example, let's use the community center as, as Chris brought up. So they run and it's, they're going to use 50 people and they go, forget it. We have something with 75. We're going right. for it. They go for it. COVID police don't show up and blah, blah, blah. And in 14 days, we extend it. They're going to keep operating to what they think. They're going to use their best judgment, which has been what everybody's been saying going forward. Her guidelines and recommendations are we need to flatten that curve. We need to look at this. Now, again, if it, if it got super serious, like it did a couple months ago, maybe different if, if the entire region spikes or something like that. Um, again, it's difficult. And the legislature punted on this. They went, oh, we want to give you local control. We won't give you local control on levy or anything like that, but this you can take, you know? <laughs> um, thanks. The governor didn't very do thanks, the guys. either by overreaching. It doesn't matter. But so. Everybody did it, and it's, it's, it's terrible. So, um, and, and to, to come down this way with something else in the AG, it, even in the lawsuit, didn't really protect. It, it, it came down to the lower levels of health officers right here in the city. Actually, so it's, it, it, it was a loaded plate is what it was. But anyways, so here we are. Now we, we have to figure it out. You know, Mayor, right, we haven't had an a increase in the deaths. It's been at 11 for almost two weeks, maybe 10, 12 days. So... Obviously, something's working. The, the numbers, yeah. I, I think yeah. Darcy yeah. said that early so, on, the numbers are looking so, better. And I think maybe that's why I like this measured approach to let the businesses kind of do it, because instead of opening it wide open, so we don't go back to what we had two months ago. Again, but this young lady or whoever, these health people need a metrics to measure off. So, and again, they're going to, public's going to do what they want to do. So, yeah. Yeah, they're, you know, I, somebody stated it that they'll listen if, if they so choose. You know, I'm, I'm sure there's gatherings of more than 10 going on right now, somewhere. Actually, the community center, wouldn't they fall under the public uh, places of public amusement? It's because it's not a um, public venue, as in uh, line, the top line, it's, it's private. Well, it's, it's, it's open to the public. I mean, the public can use it. What if we separated out homes and public venues? To me, those are two hugely yeah. different. Dar Darcy, does that different. make a difference? That's a good point. Should they even be with each other? I don't think they should be. I mean, I think that it's difficult to, you know, identify all of the different situations, right? We're talking about the football stadium versus the community center. You know, there's the reality is that just there's different levels of risk being in the community center at a football stadium. And so we can try to separate it out, but I think there's no way, you know, to something Andrew mentioned earlier to really, you know, encompass all of the different types of events. And it, it's really hard to settle on one piece of guidance that addresses all events. Yeah. That's a little bit leap of faith and faith in our businesses, faith in our residents and faith in our health officer. Kind of made the argument to separate it, Darcy, because how are you going to set a guideline in a two or three bedroom home and then a public venue in the same box? It's almost impossible. You're talking about you're talking about a gathering of ten in a small home versus hundreds. So that I think they should be separated. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I wasn't arguing against it. I just when you start talking about public venues and looking at all of the different types of public venues. You know, you have such a wider range that it's hard to settle on a number that, you know, makes sense for everything across the board as well. I mean, I, I understand the frustration and, you know, we've had lots of discussions about this too as we were talking through guidelines and looking at recommendations. Public, could public uh, venues be moved down to the other category? 
Well, you open them up. The I think that's three. one option. You know, I think not every public venue probably has a capacity limit. If you're talking about a park or something like that, there people might have questions. But uh, you know, another option we can do is is look and and look and develop some guidance around. You know, if you're having a gathering, you know, we still want you to practice those social distancing, the the safe, you know, the protective measures, and kind of give some suggestions around how to have a safer gathering as well. Public venues down to places of public. Is that what you're saying? I think that's what they were. Oh, he said other. I said other. 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 Oh, either one. <clears throat> Just a public amusement, public venue, isn't it? I think the open air uh, venues don't really have capacity necessarily. I mean, you don't, we don't know how much capacity is at Bob and Giant, or I think that's the <sighs> distinction there. Square. It, it's really, I think, an. Where would the uh, farmers market fall under public venue? I mean, it's a or it's out, it's out in the open at Drexel Town Square. I mean, it's it's it's, it's always been classified as other and an essential business. Yeah, so I think what, it would fall under other. So logical put put it down there other with uh, athletic fields. <laughs> Sorry. Limit on gathering. So then there is no limit, right? And, and yeah, there's mention it. Okay, yep. I want to do something with the um, this 14 day stuff, though. Um, I don't want to have to come back at this again. I, I think with it in place. You wouldn't have to come back because even if she extends it, it's going to be business as they're operating. The only way they'd come back is with a spike. Am I wrong, Darcy? Well, you may get a spike. I mean, well, you, you very well. I mean, you will have a workplace office. You, you're going to get. You may get a spike. You get a doubling in a week. Very much so. But again, if it's if it's if it's trackable and and say it 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 was at a single business, yeah, that's yeah, different than if. Um, we're finding yeah, it a, all over the cases community spread. It's a different story. But. All over the place. Yeah. yeah. So. <sighs> yeah, I don't think the intent would be to go backwards to another phase. It might mean that if you know that we stay in phase C for a longer period, if we're seeing a spike in cases, or if hospitals are struggling to keep up with the number of patients that need to be treated, we would stay there longer before moving on. It's not the. It wouldn't be the intention to go backwards. That would be where you would control more surgically an issue in the community, like at a workplace or. I mean, that's the key to like this that. is having the, the right. capability to do that. Yeah. Really. Right. If we can tie it to that, that type of the facility, then that's what we would do. Oh, well, we don't know because other than the senior care facility, I don't know if you can deal with them. Oh, no. Workplace right. outbreak necessarily. They haven't had one, big one yet. Well, but neighboring communities have. Oh, you know, cut it. That was not a. I don't want to throw the name out there, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, a, not cleanly done, you know. It's, so, I, let me let me help, if I can. I think that there's most consensus, although there's some opinion that option three is, you know, a contender. I think there's most consensus around option two beginning at phase C and moving gatherings of people into the other category and not trying to regulate because there's such a wide breadth. We're not trying to regulate people in their homes. I wouldn't think if they're going to have 11 family members versus nine. Correct. I don't well, think I th they're usually in, in homes. It's un unrelated people. It's usually the gating criteria. So I think maybe under the other category, we could have, you know, something along the lines of other gatherings of people, collective gatherings, or I know we, Seems like we've went away from the term mass gatherings, Darcy, because it's not in the final iterations of this and it's been all along. So I think there's, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but <clears throat> option C or <laughs> option two, begin at C, somehow handle the mass gatherings 
uh, under the other category where, yes, with safe physical distancing and other measures in place, you're going to be able to handle the wide, it's wide breadth of gatherings, I think, in that manner. It's not going to be perfect. Um, or, you know, maybe Darcy, with this direction we've had tonight, we can look at indoor and outdoor because there's a capacity at indoor venues and there's not at outdoor venues. So maybe we can play around with that a little bit too. And I, I don't know, yeah. we need to get to that level of detail. I think we've heard you pretty clear and you guys know where I'm personally at on, we can't really limit ourselves for ever on getting 51 people together, right. indoors or outdoors. And the phase D, even though it's still homes, you would go yes with uh, safe physical distancing and protective measures as guidelines. And now I don't know where you everyone's at with 14 days or no 14 days, but I think that's, if that's our base, that's what I've heard, just taking inventory. And I know uh, there's, again, some strong feelings on phase three, but I think the, we're circling a little bit around on a, a, res, a less restrictive uh, option two. Sorry, we're going with phases and options. I'm kicking back and forth on those, but you know what I mean. Greg, anything? <laughs> My opinion's different, but majority rules. I mean, I, I think start with B, but. All right. All night. All we're done. Okay. We're on 2C. Uh, public venues are going down the other. And then uh, the determination based on vaccine is going to general social distancing and best, best practice. Um, 14 days in or out, Steve. Oh. Pitch. Let me just get some clarity from Darcy again. Um, tests will continue to be taken and the numbers that you receive, I mean, you'll share with us and we'll be able to determine whether or not there's a problem or not. Correct. Yeah, we'll still be looking at the data. We'll still be doing everything that we do from an investigation and follow-up standpoint. Uh, okay. The 14 days oh, okay. really allows us to have a, a, a pretty good understanding of how the expansion is impacting the spread of disease. Okay. With that being said, then I, I don't see why we, there has to be the 14 day limit on there, or at least term. Because the testing and the, and the data will still be used. Yeah, it ain't gonna make a to me. It ain't gonna make a difference if it's in or out. Like right. Mike had yeah. Said. yeah, I said the same thing. So, I, Rich, you're in out. Out, Mike, you're in. Well, I like it in, but I'll take it. I'll take it out because we are gonna look at the data in, in or out. I said it before. All right, Ken. Yeah. And Chris. Out. But I support option okay. three. We'll keep it in. <laughs> Yeah, you're out. You're out of luck. So there, does, that, uh, <laughs> does that mean we just skip yeah. over the okay. uh, next item? What's that? Does that mean we just skip over the next item? No, we have to move on. It's on the agenda. You guys have enabled the ability to, to uh, in my am enabled. You guys can do whatever you want to do, but you've, I think, enabled with the lessening so, of the restriction. It doesn't for, forestall us. Okay, Darcy. Is, Are we clear? Is that clear as mud? And you got, and you guys yeah. got more, what you need for marching orders and. I think so. So, I mean, the words you'll know, recommend and consider are operative here? Well, it's 2C. The public venues are going to other. Uh, the phase D, the vaccination language is out. And best practice guidelines on. on yeah, we can soften all of it throughout, I think. So. And I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I don't want athletic fields to be. <laughs> I don't want. See, I, I'm, I I'm hounding this because I don't want people to think, well, baseball fields is included in stadium theaters. Is, is this thing listed as Oak Creek's recommended page Andrew, by the way, or is this the, the, the adopted Milwaukee County? The top says Oak Creek. Oh, it's, it's okay. All right, then we can alter it as we see fit, right? Oh, yeah. Steve, that would... Okay. In, uh, Darcy, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but that reference to Milwaukee County's Department of Health in the, 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 the bottom of the page. I don't even know. I'm a, do they have any legal authority to do anything here? I mean, I would, Milwaukee? Yeah. yeah. No, it was just if there were, you know, guidance that came out. Sometimes the health departments together have divided, have developed guidance, and that would be that. It wouldn't be any regulation. But, it, I mean, the way it's phrased, that you're going to, you know, we're going to follow. That, that's another word, another place in there I'd say consider, you know, that. But 
Anyway. Okay. Nuance. So we got we what we soften, need. We can look at that throughout and soften it. Everything All right. Like that. So Andrew, would would you have that created by tomorrow morning? Later. Tonight. Um, Just because I know there are constituents that okay, what'd you decide upon? I think it'll be our first priority in the morning. Okay, so but, but, but again, it'll it'll be in place when the order expires it's on the twenty first Thursday. Yep. When does the business journal or whatever internal sentinel do their first update in the morning? I don't know. We'll have a we'll have a press release ready by then. I mean, it'll be eight to nine a.m. Well, this will go into okay. effect Friday. We can tell our constituents again, Darcy. Thank you for all the hard thank work, you, Darcy. Um, I've personally been on some late phone calls with her. And uh, I've gotten off the calls, and then she had to confer with her colleagues, and then she had work to do afterwards. She's been working Saturdays, Sundays. Uh, I don't think the general public realizes just how ever changing this has been, and, and this is great, and it's it's really something. So, I uh, please extend congratulations to your entire staff. So, thank you. Yes. We are using the last night once this become the issue, so that would be your choice. Um, yeah, I, I won't turn you down. We'll give you uh, three, four minutes. So, uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, name and address, please. Rosemary Adamson, 3920 East Ryan Road. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, Rosemary. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, I can, Rosemary. Um, okay, go ahead. I've got, I've got Questions and some comments. Our, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. We're not taking questions, questions and comments. We're not taking uh, questions. No, just just commentary, please. Um, on the discussion. Uh, it was quite confusing to listen to you guys debate this, and at times it seemed as if you are passing rules on how many people I can have in my house. I. Uh, they're they're guidelines, ma'am. They're just guidelines. Uh, we're we're right. counting we're counting on you to uh, take the recommend, recommended CDC uh, appropriate guidelines and use your best judgment to protect yourself and others. All right, um, I I agree with I think it's option B, although I'm not quite sure. I think that um, the businesses are the best equipped to determine what works what is safe but i think that the city needs to take some action and i'm also very concerned with what are we doing on reopening city hall are we going to protect uh, are I, you going to protect? excuse me you broke up a little bit are we going to protect the residents and the workers at the city are we we'll have appropriate protections in place, and we're working through our plan to reopen City Hall with appropriate right. protections for both public um, and employees. Also, what uh, Alderman Krakowski is saying, I, I think that if we're in an open-air arena and we test the people just with thermometers and they're wearing a mask watching a game that why do we have to have 10 or 50 or 100? You know, if we're safe in that environment, then why are the restrictions on the numbers? But we haven't done that. We haven't made any criteria for mask in a public place. When I go in the grocery store and I look at the clerks and they're not wearing a mask, I wonder what's going on. You are on. correct, ma'am, but again, we're, we're kind of back to personal responsibility and everybody taking charge of not only their own safety, but being courteous to others. So, um, oh, you but know, you want to come in my we, house we, and tell me we'll, what we'll I'm We'll highly encourage it, Rosemary. Now. So, um, believe me. Right, I got um, more. I got more. Oh, Let go. Okay, come on. We uh, Go ahead. I'll give you a couple more minutes. I had to listen to you for an hour. You can listen to me for five. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you a couple more minutes, Rosemary, and then, then we're going to move well, I, on I'm to the next thing. Excuse right, me? Um, I'm looking at my notes that I took over here and trying to make sense out of them. Uh, employee testing. We have nothing in there, and I don't see anything in the guidelines about employee testing. 
Um, I don't know where the cases are in my community. I didn't hear anything from my chief of police that's dealing with any offenses. Uh, again, those, those really weren't the guidelines or issues. Um, so that and I don't really hear anything here, anything here on PPE. And I, I PPE think goes we, under the recommended guidelines. That, it, that's been pretty well documented over the last two months. So. Uh, all right. All right. So, but, but thank you. Now, Appreciate it. I got, I got some more. One more minute. Yeah. Oh, incubation period. Uh, we don't know what the incubation period is for COVID. And we, if we're going to put language in something that talks about a vaccine, I think that's ridiculous, too, because I don't see a vaccine coming down the pipe. And uh, not the the I, it was hard to hear, but the vaccine went out and the incubation period did. They're going to the, the health department and and uh, where they get their data from will be be uh, driven by the way they gather their data and where the trends are going. So, um, I want to remind you, Dan, that we're looking yes. at it three years with a vaccine. And without I, a vaccine, we don't know how long. I also want to remind all that for every contact, if one person is infected, geez. they will infect 5.6 other people and we have to keep that in mind with these large gatherings now i'm done point, point well taken thank you so um with that rosemary we're going to move on to the to the next uh next subject or ne next well, next do we have a book? thank you it's getting late thank you much okay um moving on item where are we 16? 16. 16. 16. Uh, okay. Uh, consider a motion to concur with the recommendations of the Celebration Commission and cancel the 4th of July parade and the fireworks. So, uh, Andrew, you want to start us off? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> you all have in your packet the recommendations of the Celebrations Commission. They met last week. So I will open it up to discussion. Here. Yes. It, it, it's tough to disagree with what they did. My only concern was how long they may have waited to come to this conclusion and what type of um, internal supporting data that they got that led them to these decisions. For example, in a normal year, in the old normal, um, we probably would have all received our emails and such from the Celebrations Commission to, are you gonna participate in the parade or not? And um, to make this short, let's say, let's say on a normal, old normal year, they would have sent out 125 emails, letters, whatever, to last year's participants and say, hey, you wanna come back? Are you gonna come in to this? If they had come back, if they had done that and come back and said, well, you know, we sent out 125, but we only got like, you know, 35 of, of those really want to participate, that would be a clear indication that there's not a lot of uh, business participation, you know, interest in, in participating in the in the parade. Uh, you know, there's not going to be a high school band probably, you know, businesses probably with not being open, they wouldn't have the money to, to participate. So. I, it seems like they may have waited, they, the group, may have waited just a little bit uh, to a point where, well, we, we can't we can't ramp this up in a short amount of time. Uh, we kind of took the approach, we're going to wait and see. But we didn't do anything to justify having it or not having it because uh, I know I've only talked to like 10 or 12 people about this, but they all wanted the parade. They felt it was an important thing. And um, they wanted the fireworks. And short of sitting down and forming some sort of committee and saying, hey, what can we do? Let's brainstorm. Uh, there's not going to be anything at the Legion. There will be no ice cream stuff. There's no picnics, no nothing. Nobody's throwing candy. Uh, pe again, people won't show up because they don't want to because of the COVID thing. So I, I just felt that there was a void there in, in coming to this the conclusion 
um, but they don't want to have it. That's all. I don't think so. I think they they gauged it very early. Uh, it was an open meeting. You could have attended and asked those questions there. So you could have, you can always call the chair. I was as well. I was involved in another WebEx meeting that night, so I, I couldn't. Okay, but yeah, still, you you could have contacted the chair and and found that out directly. Um, as far as them doing their norm, uh, no high school ban. There's nobody to contact at the school. The Cub Scouts are not meeting. Um, most of their support groups aren't available. Um, it, like you said, in a normal year, yeah, things would have been different. This isn't a normal year, unfortunately. So um, they did have police and fire there. Um, and again, you, you can read what they put in in the report and their recommendation was a 6-3 vote on who would volunteer. And that's the other thing. This is a group of nine people that put on the largest single event the city sees all year, probably. Um, a single day event. Lions Fest might dwarf it, but they got far more help. Uh, they rely on volunteers. Um, these, these are volunteers. So again, it's not like um, their employees of the city or anything like that. So um, I'll, I'll leave it open for questions. To your uh, point on police and fire, uh, we don't really have a formal opinion on police and fire, do we? I don't see anything here. The committee members voted the 6-3, right? Mm -hmm. Steve, you got an uh, what do you guys feel about, you know, the point I, I want to make is if police fire your uh, head of DPW, uh, your key people in the PD that run the traffic, if none of the if none of these people are on board, I don't see how it's going to happen. Um, Steve Anderson from the police department, uh, DPW, and Chief Cressick's on Zoom, um, but DPW was at the meeting as well. I will speak what Ted said. He said he He's can. On the call. Oh, he is still. Sorry, I won't speak for Ted. Then he can. Um, we did not vote it was this was their committee's decision we think logistically it will be very difficult to manage a crowd in both events this year if everybody else around us and the bigger cities have already canceled some people may not go but you're also going to get a lot of people who are coming to this event so that if the committee would have said we're moving forward we manage what we can but we think that the crowd because people there are people who strongly believe in this there are a lot of people who also say we need a break this year because of this um the committee put a lot of thought into it um then their discussions on what they could do and what they couldn't do um, so it was it was good to hear they listened to, before they made their final votes they did seek input from our perspective i'm not going to tell them i don't think you should host um, do your event. But I think if the crowds from other communities are all coming here, it's going to be a much different, um, much many more people than what we're used to or a much different crowd um, for that. Um, and I probably the one who brought up the to, to the committee, the band or what would the parade actually consist of? I think that was a question I asked during the meeting. So that, that's the input from uh, and our the people who ran the fireworks, the captain and the lieutenants that ran that. Would there would would there be shuttles? Wouldn't there be shuttles? How do you manage parking? How do you manage all of the people down there parking in neighborhoods? Um, if that's there, there's no way to social distance people on a parade route. Um, there was an extent option or a suggestion of extending the parade route to a different area. That's going to require more staffing that we're going to have to try and get from somewhere to manage more traffic posts and what we need. But you're not going to social distance people on a parade route. Well, the, the biggest challenge there is the end point of that parade. You know, if you extend it, I mean, those people are going to, those people are going to be walking back to the Legion and junior high, because that's where the parking is. So extending, when you got them 20, 30, 40 deep at that Legion, yep. that's, that's an issue. Correct. You know, I mean, I, I don't see the parade going forward. That's my personal opinion. I would like to see the fireworks. You've got a, a huge area down there. I think people can spread out. Um, I like 
just my opinion. I'd like to see the fireworks go forward, but I don't see the logistics at a parade happening. And one input on fire parking was an issue. Getting people down there may be an issue. And I, I will let Ted speak to that. Um, seating because of where the fireworks were launched last year, I was not down for that setup of that. But it's a big field, but not all the grass was cut. And that's so seating, it wasn't as, it is a big field, but it wasn't as vast as what we would think. So I, if the fire chief or Ted want to get way in, I will turn over to them, unless there's any questions. Thank you, Steve. Uh, chief Kresic. Thank you, Mayor. Mike Kresic, Fire Department. Uh, just to reiterate what Chief Anderson had already mentioned, um, we, we did not provide a vote. We did provide our, our input at the commission meeting and there was some very insightful discussion uh, from all the members of that board prior to us giving our comments. So very well thought out reasoning for their decisions. Uh, Alvin and Lark uh, made a statement earlier regarding relying on the experts and, and from FIRE's perspective, we do. We look at public health, we look at the CDC and now the state health department as far as their recommendations. Uh, current recommendations do reflect um, that large gatherings um, and, and festivals and parades would be included in those. Um, there is the urging not to hold those at this time. Obviously that can change uh, to Alderman Krakowski's point, it's early on, uh, but the recommendation certainly at this time is to approach those with caution. I think it's well established that those large groups do pose a risk and the logistics of maintaining social distancing and safe practices is very difficult. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Ted, any comments? Um, I, I would have to kind of concur with with uh, Steve and Mike Kresick's opinion on this. I mean, we would be happy to set it up if, uh, if we decided to move forward uh, with it. I think with uh, Milwaukee already canceling uh, their event, along with a lot of the other communities around us, I, I think the crowd might become unmanageable. Thank you, Ted. Um, questions, discussion, Rich? Comments, um, because I, at, at first I was one that was really in favor of, of trying to conduct this event or tweaking it somehow so that it, we, it, so we could do something to celebrate, to provide some degree of normalcy. That's what I heard from a lot of the constituents provide some degree of normalcy. Sadly, there's nothing normal about the, the health crisis that we're in right now. And after reading some of the challenges on this committee report from celebrations about getting you know the, the squads together to participate, uh, hearing from public works and public safety about managing the potential for overwhelming crowds, boy, I, this year, I don't think that we can safely conduct celebration to kick off. Yes, but at this current time of the information that we have, I don't think that it's safe to conduct the I don't think it was in the report, and I think, actually, I think it was Chief Anderson said, you know, in celebrations is open to other things, whether fireworks happen later in the year. At, maybe we will have a beer event down at Lake Vista, or um, Chief Anderson brought up changing the tree lighting and maybe doing a holiday parade, if we're at that point then. Um, but again, um, that would be a celebrations to to try to pull together. Right, we can celebrate our community in, in, in some other fashion. Correct. Somewhere down the road and we have a clear picture of what's going on with our communities and, and our states and our nation's health. Steve, if, Mayor, I think you made, a, you made a good point with regards to the volunteers and, you know, we all volunteer in whatever private life we have. And I think it would be it may not come come across in the in the best light that the council would say, "All right, we agree to this, but 
you know, to not have this event, but we want this event. And then we, we direct a group of volunteers who by a vote of six to three said, no, we don't want to do it this year. And then we get into a, a tit for tat because, well, okay, they, they said, you can't make me do this and so on and so forth. So I think it's the, it's probably, unfortunately, the safe route to go considering because you, we don't know if any of the, the, the people who normally volunteer for these events and are there for years and years and years might be part of that category who shouldn't be out in public. So if we're going to be short volunteers, that's, that's a, that just puts a burden because these nine people get hundreds of volunteers. And if you don't have hundreds of volunteers then then we have issues. So it's for what that's worth. Chief Anderson, like the floor again? Just to reiterate one quick thing. And to your point, there were some volunteers who specifically could not be in public because of their situation. And going back when I said, nobody knows what crowd will show up or won't show up for this. That's part of the issue. So when I say it could be a different crowd, there's no clue. Every year is a little different, but it's kind of a norm for years. We could have half the people, we could have four to five times the amount of people. There's no knowing um, what people's interest is going to be at this point, which you had a very long debate, the item or two, I don't know what, what it was prior to this, um, to get to this bush. point. Yeah, to to it. But it, it's, um, <laughs> there's a lot that we don't know. And that crowd, it could just be, it could be the norm, but the committees, there's some people who said, I can make phone calls and that's all I can do. I can't be there that day to help with anything because of my home situation. There were several of them that were in that or boat. Professional situation. Or, or professional, yes. And so they weren't able to do this because of their circumstance. Um, and since I sat in the, the committee meeting, I wanted to just reiterate your point is accurate on, on that for that group. Greg? Thoughts? Um, <clears throat> I agree with Alderman Kurkowski. Um, I mean, it sounds like logistically and safety wise, it just can't happen this year. Um, and the commission that made the diff difficult decision to recommend it to us that it gets canceled. Um, how would it look if we overturn it? And then who's going to pick up the slack where those that don't want to have it, unfortunately, or think it in the best interest to not have it, aren't going to participate. So, I mean, I would concur with what they decided, unfortunately. Oh. Chris? Uh, no comment. Ken? Um, I would, globally, I'd obviously like for the community to have an event to look forward to. I, I think it's important to give people some optimism, some hope for something, logistically. I don't, I don't, I don't know where, if we had done any legwork already or not, if the, the table's even been set for uh, to consider what kind of parade we can even put on at, at this point. We're, we're six and a half weeks out at this point. Um, you know, knowing the fact that the school related stuff is probably off the, off the table in terms of participation. Um, you got mixed sentiment on the, on the council. I mean, the electeds and, and stuff like that are important parts of, the, of that kind of celebration to begin with. Um, the fireworks, I, I, I personally don't know if, if we could safely hold the fireworks given the transportation issues and parking issues you at that site this year if we could if they were possible to be held back near east again I, i'd consider that uh, other than that i some others have suggested maybe uh, charge the celebrations committee to with our, with with a motion to entertain some alternative event or uh, uh, co-locate their efforts to another is this is this an event for something later in the, in the summer to celebrate uh hopefully getting past a lot of chaos like the mayor said me fireworks with the uh, christmas tree lighting you know but I, I go every year to the third ward for the christmas tree lighting there and they have fireworks uh, which very enjoyable but like, yeah no well, yeah maybe you do something like that so it's as painful as it it makes me to say this it's i don't see it happening you've got you got a uh, committee that's in charge of this they're not on board by majority vote um, department heads key people that run this thing aren't on board 
so if we go ahead and and say we're going to do it, I mean, it's that's doesn't make much sense well, to me. Yeah, you don't want to have a half half arson. No, they're uh, if, effort, well, their no. hearts their hearts aren't going to be in this thing, and you're going it's going to translate into an event that's probably not going to look. I mean, right off the top, uh, the cornerstone of that parade is the high school band. You know, people come out to see that. And you know, they're, they're not having. They probably won't be there. No, well, they haven't you done know, anything. So what are you going to have? You're going to have businesses that are advertising their products. Is that going to be the extent of the parade? You know, the back in Gilbert, they drive a tractor down the street, and never would. <laughs> so I, I, I say no. <laughs> Multiple tractors, the combine, for good measure. So, yeah. All right. They, they uh, don't come to the parade and see you <laughs> sit on the board. I can tell you that. How tip? No, they want to. All get right. Ice cream for me. We ready for a motion? So. <laughs> Uh, on 16. Alderman Lorical moved to concur with the recommendation of the Celebrations Commission and cancel the July 4th parade and fireworks. Dupniak, second. Roll call. Alderman Tillman. Aye. Gail? Aye. Kuzikowski? No. Kirkowski? Aye. Lorick? Aye. Dupniak? Aye. Item 17 is consideration uh, to concur with the mayor's appointments as fouls. Um, this is the Board of Review. Uh, these are three long stand, pretty long standing uh, commissioners there. And uh, they've all agreed to do another five year stint. And uh, just again, I thank them when I called them. But uh, once again, thank you for your time and service uh, going forward. So if you take a look at those. And if you agree, motion, please. We will move then to concur with the mayor's appointments as listed. Kuzikowski, a second. Roll call. Alderman Gale. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Lorick. Aye. Dupniak. Aye. Tillman. Aye. And item 18 is consideration of a motion to designate Now Media Group, uh, parent company for the journal, and South Now Edition to serve as the official city newspaper for the next 12 months. Your favorite, Mike. Oh my God! I know you always. Just you gonna, want a commentary? I'm just Go gonna ahead. shake my head. <laughs> <laughs> what Anyways, is, what um, is that final number? There was what some group that uh, twelve thousand dollars, sixteen thousand, oh, sixteen. Again, yeah. we do do our postings Please. through there, and um, all things aside, you know, print media ain't what it used to be. And Eric tries to get around. He covers like all of southeastern Wisconsin now. <laughs> so. um, Anyways, we haven't seen him in a long time. Here. Motion on 18. No, I guess we just don't have anything yeah. going on, really. No, never. Never here. No. Mike, you want this one? No. All right. <laughs> Gail moved to designate Now Media Group to serve as the official city newspaper for the next 12 months. Oracle second. Roll call. Alderman Guzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Lorick. Aye. Dupniak. Aye. Tolman. No. Gail. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, item 19, can this consideration of a resolution approve a, approving a certified survey map submitted by Michael Faber uh, for the Ryan Business Park for the properties at 9540 and 9700 South 13th and 1001, 1199, and 1203 West Ryan Road. Doug, would you help us out on this one, please? The wrong sure um well forgive me for that um this is an item that is approving a certified survey for the ryan business park uh thank you and mike if you're still here uh, uh waiting to answer questions we appreciate that oh oh mike had a sip holy cow uh, no mike favor uh, oh and mike simmons here we got both no i think it's probably just mike favor if that but in, in essence this is a, a csm that's an interim csm that uh, kind of takes us through that transition from uh, the initial land divisions for the Ryan Business Park and creates the parcels, which are certainly necessary for, for both Amazon, which is lot five, as well as the reconfiguration of the hard corner at 13th and Ryan for that uh, either retail or industrial user. Also creates lot six, which is will ultimately contain the right of way via future land division and dedication for Bartell Court, as well as the, the kind of the pocket park and historical locker that has been discussed from day one 
with respect to this development. So this is a means to an end. It's not the end, uh, but it's just a mechanism to create those land divisions necessary for this project to continue. Uh, thank you, Doug. Um, would Mr. Faber like to speak? He's waited a long time. Eh? We can at least afford a minute courtesy. Mike, if you're with us, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you, Mayor, Council Members, Michael Faber, Ryan Business Park, LLC, N17 W24222 Riverwood Drive Street, 160 Waukesha, Wisconsin. Um, <clears throat> I'm happy to address any details about the purposes. There's three purposes, as Doug explained, for this CSM. We would have done it all in one fell swoop, but there are state restrictions on the number of parcels that can be part of a CSM. Uh, shortly, we will be back in front of you on lot six to split it into the three pieces um, uh, for dedication to the city. Uh, but this cleans up uh, and makes one marketable piece for our remaining land, cleans up the end of the cul-de-sac for Bartell Court, um, which will be handled uh, with a permanent limited easement for the city to control the end of, the, of Bartell Court, the new city street that crosses the creek. And uh, I'm available to answer any questions at all. I got through this by pouring myself another glass. <laughs> Is there any questions uh, from Mike re uh, regarding this CSM? Nothing from Ken. Mike, anything? Chris, you're planning, you want to kind of synopsize it or? Uh, you know, uh, pretty much what Mike just mentioned in the end, it's, you know, the tail of two sides here. <laughs> He's got to just wrap it up and he'll be back again in a couple of months. So. Yeah. Uh, anything, Greg? Rich? Sure. Steve? All right. Uh, motion, please. Uh, Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Gil, move to approve resolution 12159-051920, approving a certified survey map submitted by Michael Faber, Ryan Business Park, LLC, for the properties on 9540 and 9700 South 13th Street and 1001, 1199, and 1203 West Ryan Road. Kusikowski, second. Roll call. Alderman Kirkowski? Aye. Lorik? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Toman? Aye. Gail? Aye. Guzikowski? Aye. And item 20 is the license committee. We'll turn that over to Alderman Kirkowski. Thank you, Mayor. I'm sure we've all had time tonight to review the Common Council report uh, for the license committee. Any questions, cares, or concerns? Seeing none, Kirkowski make a motion to grant the various license requests as listed on the May 19, 2020 license committee report. Dukniak, second. Roll call. Alderman Lorick. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gale. Aye. Guzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. And item 21 is our vendor summary report. And Bridget's waiting patiently to ask question, uh, answer questions. And I don't know if Mike Simmons is on the line. If not, uh, we got Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Doug. It's been a long night. Okay. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here, Mayor. If anyone has a question for Mike, oh, thanks, Mike. <laughs> oh, sure. I, I saw his face. <laughs> it's been a Mike long time. Put me in, Coach. Put me in. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna need a lot more months of our, that kind of pay invoice level. A couple of years ago, we were. Got a new truck. Yes. We buy our wood chips. We don't make our own for the parks. Are they like maybe playground chips? Playground chips, yeah. probably. Yeah. Okay. All right. When you guys are satisfied, uh, motion, please. If there's no questions, sorry. The goosey. Right. I'll right. right. move to uh, approve the May 13, 2020 vendor sum report and the total amount of. $648,162.74. Zikowski will second. Roll call. Alderman Dukniak. Aye. Toman. Aye. Gail. Aye. Guzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Lorik. Aye. And item two, two is consideration of a motion to convene and to close session pursuant to Wisconsin state statutes to discuss the following. Section 19.85 sub 1 sub C sub E and sub G to consider the medical separation for police officer James Dooley. Uh, President Gell. Thank you, Mayor. 
Gail moved to convene in the closed session pursuant to Wisconsin State Statutes to discuss the following A, section 19.85 sub 1 sub C, sub E and sub G to consider a medical separation for police officer James Dooley. Kuzikowski, I'll second. I'll call. Alderman Toman. Aye. Gail? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. Lorik? Aye. Dukniya? Aye. We will now convene into closed session and reconvene at its conclusion. Thank you very much for staying with us for the lengthy discussion. A uh, very important one. Thank you. We'll now convene into open session. Motion, please. Gail yeah, moves to reconvene in open session. Second. 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 That was Kuzikowski. Did you get that? Okay. okay. Uh, roll call, please. Alderman Gale. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Lord. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Toman. Aye. And item 24 is consideration of motion to take action. It will move that the council concurs with the personnel committee recommendation to approve the medical separation for police officer James Dooley effective May 13, 2020. Kuzikowski second. Roll call. Alderman Kuzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Lorik. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Tobin. Aye. Gail. Aye. And that'll bring us to adjournment. And again, thank you all for bearing with us through a very long, difficult discussion. Uh, we are moving forward though. Please uh, check the website um, for the official announcement. And if you're a business, please feel free to contact uh, City Hall and Health Department for recommended guidelines. And uh, again, everybody be safe and healthy out there. Uh, motion to adjourn, please. Kurkowski, make a motion to adjourn. Dukniak, second. Roll call. Alderman Kurkowski. Aye. Lork. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Toman. Aye. Gail. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye.